search and, uh, search and rescue efforts continue in Taiwan after the 7.2 magnitude earthquake recently. And we have updates from there. And of course, we also have updates regarding aid. Will aid continue to come to Gaza and by which road? We have the latest for you. Welcome to our viewers in Indonesia and across the world. Thank you for joining us on this our new show on Sea Today. For the next three hours, we will bring you the latest from Indonesia, Southeast Asia and around the world. I'm your host for today, Kai Surya. And please say hi to my co-host for the day, Ranga Estemat and Krishna Sam. Hello. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. First time on the deck with you, Krishna. Yeah, it's good. It's <laughs> you? Good. You too? I've, uh, no, I've, oh. I've, been, no, I've done shows with him already. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. I look forward to this man. Awesome. <laughs> fun, be fun. Yes. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ranga Estamat. I will be bringing your sports update later on in the hour. And we got we have a lot of coverage from basketball, from volleyball to and of course local volleyball players actually making headlines at the moment. So make sure before we start you follow us on our socials. We are on X, Instagram and YouTube at C Today News. Now with us today is Krishna for the latest from the business world. Yes, thank you so much, Ranga. My name is Krishna Sam. We're going to take a look at some market and business updates from Indonesia, the region, and elsewhere around the world, including potentially a train that will cross mm -hmm. Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia. But first, let's take a look at what made the top story for today. Some 24 people were trapped, and one person was found dead in a severely tilted building in Taiwan's Hualien County. As I was mentioning there, a Brunei-based infrastructure company is planning to build a high-speed train network across three countries in Kalimantan, namely Indonesia, Brunei and Malaysia, called the Trans-Borneo Railways. From sports, volleyball player Megawati Hangestri, who hails from Jember, officially joins Jakarta Bin after a contract with the South Korean V-League club Dejon Jung Wanjang Red Sparks ended. And make sure you stay tuned for this. Later for see the Ramadan stories, we'll talk about money bouquets, especially ahead of Eid with the founder of Sihedon, a business that specializes in decorations using banknotes. Money, 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 money. Have you ever received a banknote bouquet? Uh, I haven't received no. one, but my father had, and then I, you know, I got a good look at it, and it was pretty. I mean, it's very interesting because it's it's very uh, very trendy now. Like for graduation, so. right, right. you give them a bouquet, Birthdays, or yeah. even in in um in weddings, you know, mm. as, as the for offerings. Weddings, right? Like I don't know, some some even fold to like six million, five, six, wow. seven million. It's really interesting. It's a classy way to give someone. Actually, it was a very. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, for me personally, I mean, it's debatable. It's debatable. It's for uh, me. It's a very. I'm just giving, you know. I know. I know. It's, you know, it's, you know. It's, but but how are you? You know, I prefer digital. I guess. Yeah. I, I'm exactly. gonna send you my QR. That's exactly. it. The QR right yep. there. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's space. Right? Yeah. Yep. True, true. <laughs> but we will talk about that, and we also try to fold money and how to make bouquets. So make sure you stay tuned with us. Perhaps you want to make your own bouquets for your little ones in the families as well. That might be something very interesting. Now let's move on to world news and our headlining story. Taiwan's emergency services continues its search and rescue operations earlier today at the scene of a partially collapsed building at the epicenter of the earthquake zone in Hualien City. The strongest earthquake in a quarter century rocked Taiwan on Wednesday morning, claiming the lives of nine people. Dozens were left stranded at quarries at a national park, while some others trembled out of windows of damaged buildings. The quake, which injured more than 1,000 people, struck during rush hour and was centered off the coast of rural mountainous Hualien County. The area saw buildings leaning at severe angles with their ground floors crushed. And so from Taiwan, around 24 people were trapped in a severely tilted building in Taiwan's Hualien County, were successfully rescued after a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck at 7.58 a.m. on Wednesday. At least one person was found dead as rescue efforts concluded around 10 p.m. the same day. The 10-story structure housing a mix of homes and shops tilted over and appeared close to collapsing. Local fire department warned that the building's displacement had risen by five centimeters throughout the day due to constant aftershocks, raising the risk of collapse. 
Many managed to escape when the earthquake struck. Rescuers worked throughout the day to free those trapped inside and found a woman who already had no vital signs. To prevent further collapse, local fire departments deployed tower cranes, excavators and trucks to position large rocks for support. According to the local emergency operations center, the quake had left nine people dead and 1,011 others injured as of 10 p.m. yesterday. Meanwhile, more than 100 people were trapped following the earthquake that hit the sea area near Hualien County. A dash cam video captured the moment on Wednesday when traffic was affected by a strong earthquake that struck Taiwan. Some cars were seen parked by the side of a highway in New Taipei City as the island was hit by the most powerful earthquake in nearly 25 years. At least nine people were killed and hundreds injured while buildings and highways were damaged and train services interrupted. Taiwan lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a line of seismic faults encircling the Pacific Ocean, where most of the world's earthquakes occur. And as a result, Taiwan's Vice President William Lai recently observed the damage caused by the earthquake in Hualien City on Wednesday. He was shown a partially collapsed building and told the press that rescuing survivors is the government's top priority. He visited Hualien City on Wednesday afternoon after a magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck the east coast Taiwan earlier in the day. The vice president also urged rescue teams to waste no time in searching for those who are trapped under debris and affected areas. According to data compiled by the Central Emergency Operations Center, there were nine fatalities at least, with more than 1,100 injured as of 7 p.m. or 10 p.m. on Wednesday. Meanwhile, 137 remain trapped in various locations, including in quarries and sections of Provincial Highway No. 8. Now let's turn our focus to Gaza. We know that recently eight workers have become victims of airstrike by Israel and as a result a sea convoy of undelivered food for Gaza returned to Cyprus on Wednesday after World Central Kitchen or WCK workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike on Monday evening. A sea convoy carrying food for Palestinians in Gaza was forced to return to Cyprus in the wake of the Israeli airstrike that claimed the lives of World Central Kitchen workers in Gaza. The cargo ship, laden with 240 tons of essential supplies, including food, anchored in Larnaca, Cyprus, following the attack. The deaths of several aid workers have prompted the World Central Kitchen to temporarily suspend operations in Gaza. The deadly strikes have renewed criticism of Israel's conduct in the nearly six-month-long war with Hamas. It also highlight, highlighted the perilous conditions and workers face in trying to deliver food to Gaza, where nearly a third of the population is on the brink of starvation. Three British nationals, a Polish citizen, an Australian and a Canadian-American were killed alongside their Palestinian driver while working to bring food as part of the world's central kitchen. The United Nations World Food Program has suspended nighttime aid missions within the Gaza Strip for at least 48 hours to allow further security assessments on the ground. Israeli airstrikes on aid workers delivering food in Gaza has killed at least eight people. The attack marks the latest Israeli offensive to hit humanitarian efforts in the Palestinian territory. Our uh, colleagues in the Office of Humanitarian Affairs, they tell us that we've suspended our nighttime uh, movements within the Gaza Strip for at least 48 hours to allow for further evaluation of the security issues uh, that impact our uh, personnel on the ground and, of course, the civilian population we are efforting to help. And this follows um, the killing of the uh, world, world Central 
kitchen staff on uh, Monday. We can only underscore once more that delays and the denial of humanitarian missions not only prevent us from reaching those in need, but they also impact other operations and delivery by diverting scarce resources. I want to apologize first regarding the in misinformation that I gave earlier. The number of casualties uh, from the World Central Kitchen uh, employee or aid workers that were killed were seven, but of course does not diminish the tragic incident or th from the Israeli airstrike that happened in Gaza. All right, moving on, Indonesian actress Sandra Dewi has been summoned for questioning as a witness by the Attorney General's office in the corruption case of Pete Tima, which involves her husband, Harvey Mois. Sandra Dewi heeded the summon earlier today and was accompanied by her legal team. Sandra Dewi made the appearance to the public early Thursday after her husband Harvey Mois was detained at the Attorney General office last week. Harvey was arrested over allegations that he acted as a middleman to help a private firm illegally man manage mining areas belonging to Pepe Tima. Earlier on Monday, Harvey's two luxury cars were confiscated by the junior attorney general for special crimes for investigation processes, including a Rolls, uh, Rolls Royce that he gave to his wife as a birthday gift. The attorney general's office has named at least 16 suspects in the graft scandal that involves illegal mining activities with Petetima that span from 2015 to 2022. Some suspects were also charged with money laundering in connection with the case. And still on news regarding Indonesia, where the country's defense minister Prabowo Subianto arrived at the Subang Air Base in Selangor, Malaysia yesterday. He is scheduled to meet with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim today. Prabowo was welcomed by his Malaysian counterpart, Datuk Sri Mohammed Khalid Nordin, and Indonesian Defense Attaché Brigadier General Winarno upon his arrival in Kuala Lumpur. The visit aims at bolstering defense cooperation between the two countries. The Deputy Chair of Indonesia's House Commission won as well as heads of Strategic Intelligence Agency and Defense Facilities Agency were among the ministers' entourage. Now, previously, Minister Subianto had met with his Japanese counterpart, Kihara Minoru, in Tokyo to discuss defense cooperation. Both ministers have agreed to boost the number of Indonesian cadets receiving education in Japan. To his part, Minister Minoru expressed his hope to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific region based on the rule of law, with Indonesia playing a crucial role as a maritime nation. And with this news wrap up our first segment, we're going for our first quick break in the hour. But when we come back, we'll have the latest from Southeast Asia and around the world. And later during the hour, I'll bring you the latest from the world of business. And I'll bring you the latest from the world of sports. So stay here on the three-hour news show on C Today. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well.
Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature. Only on See Indonesia. Come see the beauty. Only on See Indonesia. Only on See Indonesia. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. We are from The Jupiters! Saya, Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di Teman Bicara Mama. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Ini tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature. Only on See Indonesia. Come see the beauty. Only on See Indonesia. Only on See Indonesia. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Two, one, good. Two, three, good. Three, good. 
Hello everyone. We are from The Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di teman bicara mama. Welcome back to the Fair News Show with us on Sea Today. Now, as we all know, Indonesia is committed to maintaining world peace through several measures, which one of them include deploying its peacekeeping forces known as the Garuda Contingent or Konga. The forces have been stationed in regions including Central Africa. Right, and today we will learn more about peacekeeping efforts in Central Africa from Kizi TNI Konga 37J Minusca Task Force, Lieutenant Colonel Ibnu Muntaha. Good day, Lieutenant Colonel. How are you? What, uh, we're going to just jump in. What are the primary objectives of the peacekeeping forces in the Central African Republic? First, I would like to try get to see today and Indonesia are putting in prison in Moscow. Indonesia is a task to maintain the security council at UN headquarters. As part of uh, Indonesia company, only focus uh, only focus on engineering tasks. Uh, our main jobs in here are the first is a vertical engineer. For example, construction of public or minuska buildings and facilities. The second is a horizontal engineering. For example repair and construction of road and this uh, explosive ordnance disposal which is the search and disposal of explosive that are widely played in the territory of uh, civil and uh, that is what i can explain to you about uh, our primary task here wow could you also share some humanitarian relief operations by the garuda contingent in the region sir <laughs> Uh, like most African countries, uh, the Central African Republic is also a country that finds it difficult to grow, especially in terms of water, food, and accommodation. We are currently experiencing a lot of transition that uh, makes it difficult for people to get clean water from their daily system. Uh, in connection with this transition, Aminuska has given us instruction to help the community in the provision to clean water. So, uh, we needed water aid for the community by supporting two water tankers that were sent directly to the local community villages. Uh, it was very well received by the community in regards to counter their difficulties in getting clean water. Uh, we are also carrying out a number of activities that are directly contacted with the communities, such as uh, road construction from airport to villages, uh, garbage cleaning in the people, mar people market, and support of mass for vulnerable communities. Uh, we are still striving to our best to help us humanitarian aid for the local communities. Yes, right. Now, what uh, can you tell us the uh, challenges for the humanitarian uh, phase to uh, by the task force to deliver the aid into the vulnerable populations? All right. Uh, there are some challenges uh, that significantly affect our performance and security in carrying out our mission. Uh, those obstacles are, the first is mobility. Highways have not linked most of the territory in order to carry out humanitarian missions. And second is armed group. The security threat to peacekeepers from local armed groups is real, requiring vigilance and combat readiness in accordance with the rule of engagement. And the last is, extreme weather. Mm. Uncertain weather throughout the year is also a barrier that often affects distribution and construction in carrying out humanitarian mission. 
However, we are very grateful that so far we have been able to help our duties well and preserve the good name of Emerita in Minuska. Well, that sounds really, really great. And, uh, you know, we, we applaud all the efforts that you are doing. But we have one last question. We're days away from Idol Fitri. How is Ramadan going there for the KZ10 Ikonga 37J Minuska Task Force? Uh, we know that uh, there are about 9% of uh, Muslim population in Central Africa Republic. Hmm. But it's still hard to find a Ramadan atmosphere in the country. It, in our camp, uh, we strive to bring uh, the Ramadan atmosphere to the members by organizing some activities, uh, including uh, Tarawih, Tadarus Quran, breakfast hmm. together, and itikaf in uh, this is uh, to facilitate the members to increase their faith in this blessed month of Ramadan. And on the day of Eid al-Fitri, we also plan to hold the Eid prayers in the ceremonial hall. The, in the intention is to cure our homesickness of the festive atmosphere within Eid al-Fitri in Indonesia. Uh, uh, in addition, we also invite contingents of other Muslim countries such as Pakistan, Bangladesh, Tunisia, and others to gather and breakfast in our camp. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Ibnu, thank you so much thank for you, updating us in regards to the conditions there and the mission. May it be a successful one. And of course, please send our regards to the whole Kizitani Konga 37 J Minuska Task Force in Congo with you right there. So thank you very much for your service. Well, it certainly is, you know. It doesn't sound like they're missing a lot of the routines that we would have to, you know, have here. Yeah. You know, they got Tarawe, Tadaru. They're making really sure incredible. they're bringing it over there. Exactly. Because this is something. Yeah, because uh, we, we spoke to the, the task force in Lebanon recently. Mm -hmm. And because it's Lebanon is a Muslim, um, you know, it's a Muslim-majority country, majority country right. as well. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like they, they have got... You know, better Ramadan wise. So sometimes you got to bring home to wherever home is, exactly, right? Wherever home for, is. Uh -huh. for the moment. And you know, we only want to wish all the success to the task force for yes. their mission yes. in Congo. Now we're going for another break. Yes, and after the break, you're going to have Krishna back, and he's going to deliver some economics and business updates. So stay tuned here on the 3R News Show on C Today. Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, 
It's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Hi there, and welcome back to the three-hour news show. Now it's time for some business and economics updates with me, Krishna Sen. Let's begin with our first business and economic story where a Brunei-based infrastructure company is planning to build a high-speed trade network across three countries in Kalimantan, namely Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia, called the Trans-Borneo Railways. The project was announced by Brunei infrastructure company Brunergi Utama last week. The railways will stretch 1,620 kilometers and pass through Brunei, Malaysia and Indonesia. It will have 24 stations in total. Now the train will have speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour and is expected to have a traveling time of 30 minutes, just 30 minutes between each station. The railways will have two parts. The first part will run across the north to the west area of Kalimantan from Kinabalu to Pontianak, while the second part will run across the north to the east area of Kalimantan from Bukit Panggal to Balikpapan, including the new Indonesian capital, Nusantara. The company is preparing a budget of around 70 billion US dollars for the project, which is still in the form of a proposal and requires a feasibility study to realize it. Now, President Joko Widodo has responded to this news of this plan of a sort of trans-country um, trans railway high-speed train. He has said that, well, this was his latest comment saying that there was no communication yet regarding it, but he knows that this has been planned for a while and it also could pass through the new Indonesian capital, Nusantara. We'll see what the updates are and we'll bring them to you once we get them. Now moving on to our next story where Cambodia recently kicked off the 2024 ASEAN Cambodia Business Summit in the capital of Phnom Penh with the theme Unleashing ASEAN's Potential Connectivity, Technology and Inclusive Growth. Cambodia's Prime Minister Hun Manet said that the event provides an opportunity for the country to enhance cooperation between ASEAN and its global partners. The ASEAN Cambodia Business Summit kicked off on April the 2nd and was attended by the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce and the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, or ASEAN BAC, as well as relevant stakeholders. The summit brought more than 600 influential figures from various enterprises in Cambodia and ASEAN to discuss the theme of unleashing ASEAN's potential connectivity, technology, and inclusive growth, while also embracing new realities in trade, investment in digital in innovation, and also sustainable practices. Moreover, with Cambodia at its center, the ASEAN Cambodia Business Summit seeks to showcase the region's promising potential and initiate discussions on important topics such as ASEAN connectivity, sustainability, and renewable energy. Furthermore, Prime Minister Hun Manet regarded the theme of the summit as an essential agenda. He encouraged all relevant stakeholders to take the opportunity to strengthen partnerships, encourage technological development, and enhance a more prosperous an equitable ASEAN community. And we're back here in Indonesia, where the Indonesian Financial Services Authority, or OJK, reported on Tuesday that crypto asset investors in the country are ranked seventh globally, as the total number of investors in February 2024 had almost hit 20 million. Indonesian Financial Services Authority, or the OJK, announced that the total number of crypto asset investors by the end of February 2024 was 19.18 million, which is up 1.8% from the total number of investors in January. Meanwhile, crypto transactions in February 2024 reached 33.6 trillion rupiah, increasing 144% compared to transactions in February last year. 
Cumulatively, the total value of transactions for crypto assets in 2024 so far year to date is 55.2 trillion rupiah, which is a 113% jump compared to the same period last year. OJK dalam hal ini akan terus mendorong peningkatan literasi dan juga inklusi keuangan digital, penguatan ekosistem keuangan digital yang berkelanjutan, serta penerapan praktek bisnis yang etis dan bertanggung jawab, khususnya terkait dengan penerapan artificial intelligence. In addition, the Indonesian stock market is also showing a strong growth trend as the IDX grew 0.22% to a level of 7,288 since the beginning of 2024 up until March the 28th. Amid prospects of rate cuts, foreign investors net bought 28.2 trillion rupiahs worth of Indonesian stocks since January 1st, 2024. Now, it's not just the Indonesian crypto market that is growing, but also the global crypto market, where uh, as of today, the global crypto market cap or market capitalization is 2.61 trillion US dollars, which is 111% higher than it was one year ago. So indeed, crypto is on the up as of now because the market is seeming a bit brighter with potential Fed rate cuts, but we'll see how that pans out. All right, let's move on to our next news where the earthquake that occurred in Taiwan caused some companies to temporarily shut down their operations, including the major Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing company, TMSC. Now, TMSC produces over 60% of global semiconductors and supplies to major companies like Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA. TMSC stated on Wednesday that the company is evacuating its staff, temporarily halting its chip-making production and pausing construction of its new facility in Taiwan, while also analyzing the effect of its facilities. This comes after a magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck in Taiwan on Wednesday morning, the largest in the last 25 years. TMSC is the main contributor to the world's chip industry, producing over 60% of global semiconductors and supplying its products to global tech companies, including Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA. As the result, TSMC shares fell by 1.27% to the level of 780 Taiwanese dollars per share on Taiwanese stock exchange during Wednesday trading session. The Taiwan Semiconductor Industry Associated reported that the semiconductor industry contributes up to 15% to Taiwan's GDP, with a total output of 146.1 billion US dollars in 2021 and 162.5 billion US dollars in 2022. All right, and those were the business and e economics updates for this hour. When we return after this break, Ranga will give you the latest updates from the world of sports. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to the three-hour news show only on C Today. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the C Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m., and for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well, and your latest viral news as well. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia.
Hey guys, welcome back to the TR News Show, and this is your C Today Sports with me, Ranga Estimat. We're going to start with this one, of course, the highlight from our Indonesian um, athlete from the world of volleyball now. The future of Indonesian outside hitter Megawati Hangestri is now clear. She is now officially joining the Jakarta Bin as her contract with South Korean V League club Jung Kwan Jung Red Sparks expires. Megawati, also known as Megatron, joined the Red Sparks in July 2023 on a one-season contract. She bid farewell to her South Korean teammates on March 27. The Megatron then signed a hundred thousand US dollar contract with Jakarta Bin, having been introduced as the club's latest recruit for the 2024 Pro Liga competition. With Megawati and other new players on board, the State Intelligence Agency Club aims to clinch this year's Pro Liga title. All right, we're going to move on to basketball now. Polita Jaya Jakarta defeated High Tech Basketball Club 99-81 to at the Asian Basketball Champions League in Mongolia. Meanwhile, Prawira Harum Bandung beat home team Bishrel Medal 83-66. to Polita Jaya Jakarta turned in a strong performance in the first round of the Basketball Champions League or BCL Asia qualifiers as they defeated High Tech Basketball Team 99-81. to Reza Guntara played brilliantly by scoring five of six three-pointers for Polita Jaya. He also scored a total of 20 points. In the game, and Polita Jaya's new signing, Jack Wari McLaughlin, also scored 20 points and had four rebounds and five assists, while Andakara Prastawa netted 12 points. Elsewhere, Freddie Lish scored 25 points, including five from 100 threes. Moses Morgan notched 14 points and four rebounds, while Marcus Elliott had 11 points and four rebounds, plus five assists. The two teams will play again today, with High Tech facing Adroit Singapore, while Polita Jaya will battle Ulan Batar Sak Broncos. In another game, Indonesian Basketball League or EBL 2023 champions Prawira Harum Bandung defeated host Bisrael Medal 83-66 at the Uge Arena in Ulaanbaatar. Now, next up is another basketball news from the USA now. Anthony Davis, who scored 19 points to help the Los Angeles Lakers beat the Washington Wizards 125-120 to on Wednesday night for their eighth victory in nine games. Anthony Davis scored 19 of his 35 points in the first quarter and had 18 rebounds, leading the Los Angeles Lakers to beat the Washington Wizards 125-120 to for their three games winning streak. LeBron James had 25 points and 9 assists, while Rui Hachimura scored 19 points for the Lakers against his former team. Davis was 10 of 17 from the field and made 15 free throws without a miss. Jordan Poole led Washington with 29. The Lakers are 9th in the Western Conference and must win twice in the play-in tournament to make the main playoff bracket. Was point differential. Charlotte is worse. So this is another possession where nobody touches it. All the Elsewhere in the NBA, Joel Embiid scored four free throws to put Philadelphia ahead of Oklahoma City in the final 40 seconds of the game on Tuesday night, which concluded with a 109 and 105 victory for the 76ers. He scored 24 points against Oklahoma City Thunder in what was his first game in nine weeks following his knee surgery. Meanwhile, Chet Holmgren scored 22 points to lead the Thunder, who are in tight race with Minnesota and Denver to claim the top spot in the Western Conference. The 76ers had trailed by 11 points with 7 minutes 27 seconds left on the clock. Kelly Ober Jr. scored a three-pointer that paved the way for a Philadelphia comeback, while Embiid gave the finishing touch with a series of free throws. 
The Cameroonian also hit two for a 106 to 105 lead and added two more to advance the scoreboard to 108 to 105. Aside from notching seven assists and six rebounds in nearly 30 minutes, he also boosted his squad's confidence by saying that they can salvage their season with a postseason run, which includes last season's MVP in the lineup. Hall of Famer Allen Iverson congratulated Embiid after the game. Um, there's a lot of good ball. I'll tell you about this. Usually, um, when I have injuries, you know, I just you know, tell myself, uh, you know, move on, on to the next one. You know, get better uh, and then fix it. But this one was, um, no, he took a toll mentally, uh, you know, being depressed, and uh, he was not a good one. So, um, you know, still, still not where I'm supposed to be, especially mentally, but I just love to play. And I don't know, for, for some reason, this, this injury was just, um, uh, it was uh, disappointing, it was depressing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it was, took me a while to, Get over it, and I still haven't gotten over it. Uh, so just gotta take it day by day. Um, look at the positive. Um, I'm back. So you know, hopefully, everything will be trying to get better and uh, get back to myself. He has a very tight race now to go into the playoffs, which is going to start on April the 20th. So again, if you are the fan of NBA basketball, you surely don't want to miss this time around. All right, guys, that is a wrap for sports this hour. We're gonna take a quick break. When we return, we're gonna have more information. So let's keep it here on the three-hour news show on C today. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the C Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam. Makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau feelingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini.
Welcome to our viewers in Indonesia and across the world. Thank you for joining us on this our new show on C today. Now we're in the second hour, so we have two more hours to bring you the latest from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the world. I'm your host for today, Kai Surya. Hi guys, I'm Ranga Esamat and welcome to the three-hour news show. Make sure you follow us on X, Instagram and YouTube at See Today News for our latest updates. And with us today is Krishna and he's going to bring you the latest from the business world. Thanks so much, Ranga. Yes, I'm Krishna. We're going to take a look at market and business updates from the country, the region, elsewhere around the world, including on crypto. But first, let's take a look at what made the top stories for today. Some 24 people were trapped and one person was found dead in a severely tilted building in Taiwan's Hualien country, County. A Brunei-based infrastructure company is planning to build a high-speed trade network across three countries in Kalimantan, namely Indonesia, Brunei and Malaysia, called the Trans-Borneo Railways. From sports, volleyball player Megawati Hangestri, who hails from Jember, officially joins Jakarta Bin after her contract with the South Korean V-League club Daejeon Jongkwanjang Red Sparks ended. And be sure to stay tuned to our final hour. Our signature segment, See the Ramadan Stories, will have a chat about money bouquet, especially ahead of EAT with the founder of Sihedon, a business that specializes in decorations using banknotes. Now we move on to our headlining story of today. From Taiwan, Taiwan's emergency services continued its search and rescue operations at the scene of a partially collapsed building at the epicenter of the earthquake zone in Hualien City. The strongest earthquake in a quarter century rocked Taiwan on Wednesday morning, claiming the lives of nine people. Dozens were left stranded at quarries and a national park, while some others scrambled out of windows of damaged buildings. The quake, which injured more than 1,000 people, struck during rush hour and was centered off the coast of rural mountainous Hualien County. The area saw buildings leaning at several angles with their ground floors crushed. And that's around 24 people trapped in a severely tilted building in Taiwan's Hualien County were successfully rescued after a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck at 7.58 a.m. on Wednesday. At least one person was found dead as rescue efforts concluded at around 10 p.m. the same day. The 10-story structure housing a mix of homes and shops tilted over and appeared close to collapse. Local fire department warned that the building's displacement had risen by five centimeters throughout the day due to constant aftershocks, raising the risk of collapse. Many managed to escape when the earthquake struck. Rescuers worked throughout the day to free those trapped inside and found a woman who already had no vital signs. To prevent further collapse, the local fire departments deployed tower cranes, excavators and trucks to position large rocks for support. According to the local emergency operations center, the earthquake had left nine people dead and over 1,000 others injured as of 10 p.m. yesterday. Meanwhile, more than 100 people were trapped following the earthquake, earthquake that hit the sea area near Hualien County. A dash cam video captured the moment on Wednesday when traffic was affected by a strong earthquake that struck Taiwan. Here you can see some cars were seen parked by the side of the highway in New Taipei City as the island was hit by the most powerful earthquake in nearly 25 years. At least nine people were killed and over a thousand injured while buildings and highways were damaged and train services interrupted. Taiwan lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is the line of seismic faults encircling the Pacific Ocean where most of the world's earthquakes occur. And from our headlining story in Taiwan, let's jump into our Ramadan stories from Indonesia and around the world. Well, <sighs> it's here. 
We're counting days. Yes. Yeah, We're counting here. days. We are counting days. Yes. <laughs> really yeah, cool. Yeah. So what's the first story we got? Homecoming. Oh, yeah. Big time. Mudik, as we say here. <laughs> a lot of people are moving from, you know, the cities where they live back to their hometown. As early as possible, right? As early as possible. As early as, early as possible. tomorrow, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As early as tomorrow. Nice. And we're still here, but <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> are, uh, you know, doing their homecoming travels uh, for Eid, and a surge in traffic flow was already reported along the Jakarta Chikampek toll road earlier today. The eastbound flow was seen congested with vehicles moving at low speed. And elsewhere, thousands of travelers from the greater Jakarta area have begun crowding the roads along the northern Java Highway. Thousands of travelers from Jakarta, Bogor, Tangerang, and Bekasi set off for Eid homecoming trip to central Java, passing through the Weru intersection in Cherubon, West Java. Some, however, were seen overloading their motorcycles with excessive items while bringing along their children and spouses. Now, the northern Java Highway is seeing a surge in two-wheeled vehicles as the homecoming rush approaches. Travelers are opting to head home early to avoid congestion during the homecoming. Traffic congestion was seen this morning along kilometers 54 to 55 of the Jakarta Chikampek Toll Road. Traffic appeared busier compared to the previous day, with vehicles traveling at slow speeds of 50 to 70 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, the Jakarta-bound traffic appeared low. Police predict that this year's homecoming flow will occur from April 5th to April 8th. Now, let's take a look at, you know, different places where Ramadan is being celebrated and coming to Eid very soon. The Indonesian Embassy in Moscow had partnered with the city's spiritual Muslim community to host the annual Tenda Ramadan 2024. Yes, the event featured a cultural program called Malam Indonesia Selamat Berbuka Puasa. In the spirit of Ramadan, the Indonesian Embassy and Moscow Spiritual Muslim Community held the annual Tenda Ramadan 2024 on March 28. The festivity featured cultural presentations such as tourism videos of Indonesia, a timeline video depicting 74 years of diplomatic relations between Indonesia, Quran recitations, testimonial on fastings, and Islamic songs performed by Indonesian students in Russia. The event comments with Moscow Spiritual Muslim Community Chair Mufti Ildar Hazrat Alyaut Dinov expressing appreciation for the Indonesian Embassy participation, aiming to strengthen ties between the two countries. During the opening ceremony, Indonesian Ambassador to Russia, Jose Antonio Morato Tavares, offered condolences for the recent terrorist attack at Moscow Krokus City Hall on March 22. He hoped that attendees would experience the joyous atmosphere of Ramadan in Indonesia, emphasizing the significance of Selamat Berbuka Puasa as an expression of empathy and appreciation as well as prayers for help during the fasting month. A fourth-year student from Moscow Aviation Institute, Muhammad Reza Shah Pahlevi, signaled the time for iftar by chanting the Japanese call to Maghrib prayer. Visitors then enjoyed a variety of dishes including pumpkin soup, beef stroganoff, dates, cakes, and biscuits. The feast was accompanied by religious songs performed by the El Santri group, comprising seven Indonesian student association members in Russia. The event concluded with an Indonesia theme quiz and a competition to win 10 souvenirs. Organized by the Moscow Spiritual Muslim Community since 2006, Tenda Ramadan stands as Russia's sole iftar event, featuring cultural performances by foreign diplomatic representatives or community organizations. I'm certainly going to miss that jingle once Ramadan is over. We're going for our first quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the latest from Southeast Asia and around the world.
And later than you, I will, I'll bring you the latest from the world of business and economics. Yes, and of course, I will be bringing you the world of sports update. So stay here on the three-hour news show on C Today. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature. Only on see Indonesia. Come see the beauty. Only on see Indonesia. Only on see Indonesia. Oh, these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. I save up my energy to buy this bag. Welcome back to the Sierra News Show with us on C Today. Let's take a look at stories from Indonesia and the region, of course. Let's start from Indonesia first. Indonesian Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto has met with Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim at the Perdana Putra, Put, uh, at the Perdana Putra in Putrajaya earlier today. Minister Subianto expressed his gratitude for meeting the Prime Minister in Malaysia. Minister Subianto further said that Indonesia seeks to bolster its ties with friendly countries, particularly Malaysia and ASEAN nations. The meeting saw Subianto and Prime Minister Anwar exchanging experiences and thoughts on their careers. Both share the same goal of strengthening bilateral relations. Anwar congratulated Prabowo Subianto for his victory in the 2024 presidential election. Minister Subianto is scheduled to meet with his Malaysian counterpart, Dato Sri Muhammad Khaled bin Nordin. Yes, we move back to Indonesia now. Something that happened last night where one car was swept away by a landslide along kilometer 64 of the Bochimi Toll Road in Parung, Kuda, Sukabumi, West Java. There were no casualties in the incident. Meanwhile, authorities have closed off the toll road section in Sukabumi. Footage shows a passing car swept away by a landslide along kilometer 64 of the Bochimi Toll Road in Parung, Kuda, Sukabumi, West Java. The landslide was caused by heavy rain and prompted authorities to close off the road section to, to and from Sukabumi. Meanwhile, a joint search and rescue team as well as volunteers are on site to conduct disaster mitigation efforts. Additionally, authorities have yet to allow media teams to report from the disaster site. Uh...
berdasarkan laporan pada sekitar pukul 20 40 sampai 50 telah terjadi longsor di kilometer 64 ya 6, antara 60 sampai 64 di jalur uh, tol Bocimi dari arah Jakarta ke arah Sukabumi mendekati exit tol uh, Parung Kuda. Now additional landslides were also reported in the aftermath of that uh, struck of the one that struck the Bogor Ciawi Sukabumi toll road last night. A car was reportedly trapped in a landslide that swept over the toll road with a depth of 20 meters. Authorities say that the car was still buried under the landslide. The aftermath of the landslide was detected at the 64 kilometer mark of the Bochimi toll road session 2 in Chichuruk district Sukabumi West Java. Four cargo cranes that were deployed to clear debris and lift the vehicle from the pit had to be removed as slopes remain unstable. Authorities have now closed the toll road and diverted traffic to the Chigombong toll gate. Untuk uh, yang pertama proses evakuasi ya, evakuasi untuk kendaraan sementara kita masih melihat situasi karena tanahnya masih labil. Ya, jadi masih gerak terus informasi terakhir. Tadi hanya beberapa menit lokasi kendaraan yang awalnya itu tadi uh, di dekat di bawah sini sekarang sudah agak ke bawah sana. Kemudian untuk proses kita khususnya untuk lalu lintas uh, rekayasa sekarang kita sudah tutup total. Jadi semuanya baik yang dari arah Jakarta ke arah Sukabumi, sebaliknya juga dari Sukabumi ke arah Jakarta sudah kita tutup total. Indonesian actress Sandra Dewi has recently been examined as a witness in the alleged tin corruption case that ensnared her husband Harvey Moise. Where Harvey Moise has been named as a suspect in an alleged tin corruption case that cost the state up to 270 trillion rupiahs. To know the examination updates, so we have uh, connected with our news team, Fahrian Bahri and Reski Anasto at Attorney General Office in Jakarta. Fahri, what news do you have for us? Good afternoon, Kai and Ranga. Also, everyone who are watching see today, Indonesian actress Sandra Dewi was questioned by Attorney General Investigators at 9 a.m. local time at Attorney General Office in Jakarta on today, April 4th, 2024. Sandra Dewi was examined as a witness in alleged corruption case of thin commodities at PT Timah Mining Business License Area 2015 to 2022. She arrived at the Attorney General Office at 9 past 25 a.m. local time and Sandra Dewi wearing a white shirt. When he came to Attorney General Office in Jakarta and asked by reporters, Sandra Dewi did not comment much. She just smiled and said to a reporter that, pray for me. And she immediately entered the examination room accompanied by two peoples. Currently, Sandra Dewi has been examined by Attorney General investigators. The examination itself has been um, completed, has been examined for approximately five hours. She left from examination room at 2 past 35 p.m. local time. As we got the information from Kuntadi, he is Attorney General Office Investigators. Kuntadi said that the examination of Sandra Dewi regarding ownership of blocked account from Attorney Office Investigators. Previously, the Attorney General Office has blocked the suspect account in PT Timah corruption case. Even based on information from the Attorney General Office, it has blocked Harvey Mu'is a wife account, namely Sandra Dewi. And previously, the Attorney General Office has named Helena Lim and um, Harvey Mu'is as husband, as a suspect in the alleged corruption case of thin commodity trading in PT Timah Mining Business License Area 2015 to 2022. Meanwhile, on April 1st, 2024, investigators confiscated two luxury cars who owned by Harvey Muiz, which is a black Rolls Royce and then red Mini Cooper. In this case, the Attorney General Office has named 16 suspect. In this case, the state lost up to 271 trillion rupiah. The last feature is a calculation of ecosystem losses that are so massive and extensive. That's all I can report to you regarding Sandra Dewi um, case.
regarding thin corruption case updates in the conclusion that um, as we got information from the attorney general um, office investigator said that um, the examination of Sandra Dewi regarding ownership of blocked account from attorney office investigator but we will keep you an update later regarding the updates of thin corruption case back to studio Fahri and Reskiano, so thank you so much for your update and do stay safe. We look forward to more updates regarding to the investigation and the case, uh, this particular case. Now we're going for another break. Yes, and after that we're going to have Krishna back and he's going to deliver more economics and business updates. So Sam, what do you have for us? There he is now. Alright, so I have some very, very interesting news. As we all know, Indonesia is developing a new capital city. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. did you know, once that's completed, we will potentially be able to travel from Ikaya Nusantara to born uh, to Brunei and Malaysia. Oh, right. fun. Right, because a Brunei based the Sarawak area. Yes, exactly. Oh. A Brunei based company, they are potentially they're planning to build what's called a Trans Borneo uh, railway which will pass through in in Kalimantan which will pass mm -hmm. through Indonesia, Brunei and Malaysia. Oh, a lot of gosh. economic potential there as well, not just for tourism and stuff, but mm -hmm. of course the you know, the travel of goods and people. Tourism, yeah, so business forth. opportunity. Yeah, business opportunity, economic opportunity. So, you know, let's hope that happens. My name is All right, and we're going to take a look at more economics and business updates from Indonesia and beyond. So stay here only on the three-hour news show on C. Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Welcome back to the three-hour news show. Now it's time for some business and economics updates with me, Krishna Sam. All right, we'll begin this business segment with the story about a Brunei-based infrastructure company which is planning to build a high-speed train network across three countries in Kalimantan, namely Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia, called the Trans-Borneo Railways. The project was announced by Brunei infrastructure company Brunergi Utama last week. The railways will stretch 1,620 kilometers and pass through Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia. It will have a total of 24 stations. The train will have speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour and is expected to have a traveling time 
of 30 minutes between each station. The railways will have two parts. The first part will run across the north to the west area of Kalimantan from Kinabalu to Pontianak, while the second part will run across the north to the east area of Kalimantan from Bukit Pangal to Balikpapan, including the new Indonesian capital, Nusantara. Now, the company is preparing a budget of around 70 billion US dollars for the project, which is still in the form of proposal and requires a feasibility study to realize it. Well, Taylor Swift is getting richer and she was featured on the annual Forbes Billionaires list for the very first time earlier this week on Tuesday as she joins 13 other celebrities boasting a collective estimated net worth of 31 billion US dollars. The American pop star and icon for Swifties entered the Forbes World's Billionaires list for the very first time with a net worth of 1.1 billion US dollars. Singer-songwriter Swift entered the rich list after reaching megastar status. At this year's Grammy Awards, she made history by winning the Album of the Year prize for the fourth time. Her album, 1989 Taylor's Version, was the top-selling vinyl LP of last year. The first celebrity to make it onto the 2024 World's Billionaires list is George Lucas, the director of Star Wars, with a net worth of 5.5 billion US dollars, ranking 513 teams on the list. The second is Steven Spielberg, boasting a net worth of 4.8 billion US dollars, ranking 659th on the list, followed by Michael Jordan, who has a net worth of 3.2 billion US dollars and ranking 1,043rd the 2024 Forbes Billionaires list. Taylor Swift, meanwhile, ranks 2,546th on the 2024 World's Billionaires list. Her 190 million US dollars post-tax earnings from the Eras Tour propelled her into the Three Comma Club, a first achieved solely through songwriting and performing. Well, the world's leading AI chip maker from the United States, NVIDIA, will invest in the field of artificial intelligence right here in Indonesia. NVIDIA will cooperate with the government and a local telecommunications company to build a project called Indonesian AI Nation. Indonesian Communications and Inf Informatics Minister Budi Ari Setiadi said that NVIDIA will invest up to 200 million US dollars, or approximately 3 trillion rupiah, in the project. The minister confirmed that NVIDIA plans to build the AI project in Solo, Central Java. The project will reportedly focus on developing AI infrastructure and human resources in AI-related skills. Now, Solo was selected because it is an area considered to have good human resources and adequate infrastructure. NVIDIA commitment untuk investasi dalam bentuk infrastruktur dan peningkatan sumber daya manusia senilai 200 juta dolar. Solo itu artinya 2024 ini. Sebentar lagi ini kan konasi kita bangun tapi bahwa kita akan apa bangun pusat AI ya, Indonesia AI Nation. Moving on to other news now where the earthquake that occurred in Taiwan caused some companies to temporarily shut down their operations including the major Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing company TMSC. Now, TMSC produces over 60% of global semiconductors and supplies to major companies like Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA. TMSC stated on Wednesday that the company is evacuating its staff, temporarily halting its chip-making production and pausing construction of its new facility in Taiwan, while also analyzing the effect of its facilities. This comes after a magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck in Taiwan on Wednesday morning, the largest in the last 25 years. TMSC is the main contributor to the world's chip industry, producing over 60% of global semiconductors and supplying its products to global tech companies including Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA. As the result, TSMC shares fell by 1.27% to the level of 780 Taiwanese dollars per share on Taiwanese stock exchange during Wednesday trading session. The Taiwan Semiconductor Industry Associated reported 
that the semiconductor industry contributes up to 15% to Taiwan's GDP, with a total output of 146.1 billion US dollars in 2021 and 162.5 billion US dollars in 2022. And those were the business and economics updates for today. We're going to take a short break, but after that, Ranga will return with some updates from the world of sports, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to the three-hour news show only on C Today. Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. These are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible thing. I save up my energy to buy this bag. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Hey guys, welcome back to the 3 Hour News Show and this is your See Today Sports with me, Ranga Estanath. We're going to start with soccer right now and we're going to Germany where Sabi Alonso's Bayern Leverkusen stand on the verge of an historic league and cup double after sweeping aside Fortuna Dusseldorf 4-0 in the German Cup semi-finals on Wednesday. The club are also currently top of the Bundesliga, 13 points clear of second place Bayern Munich. Sabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen stand on the verge of an historic league and cup double after sweeping a set Fortuna Dusseldorf 4-0 in the German Cup semi-finals on Wednesday. Florian Wirtz scored twice for Sabi Alonso's side which currently holds a commanding 13-point lead in the Bundesliga and remain unbeaten in all competitions after 14 matches this season. Leverkusen took the lead in the seventh minute with Jeremy Frimpong seized on a loose ball at the far post, lofting a shot over goalkeeper Florian Kastenmeier. 
The second goal was an impressive counter-attack that took the ball from Leverkusen's touchline to the back of Fortuna's net in just two passes as Amin Adli made it 2-0. The third goal came as Kasten Meyer gave the ball away to Leverkusen midfielder Robin Andrich who set up Wirtz to score. Wirtz completed his brace with a penalty after handball, securing Leverkusen place in the final against second-tier Kaiser Lautern on May 25. Now a little bit more about German Cup. This is probably considered as the second most important club title in German football after the Bundesliga Championship, of course. And it is taking place from August until May. And the winner, the winner will qualify for the DFL Super Cup. And this is one, the UEFA Europa League, or unless if they already qualified for the UEFA Champions League. And so far, the winningest team is Bayern Munich with 20 record titles. Of course, the semifinals is going to happen and there's a, a, four more teams that are going to be participating in that. And of course, we are going to be following very, very closely to see who is going to be on the final stages of that tournament. Now, from the world of volleyball, we're going to go local, where the future of Indonesian outside hitter Megawati Hangestri is now clear. She is officially joining the Jakarta Bin as a contract with South Korean V-League club Jun Kwan Jung Red Sparks expires. Megawati, also known as Megatron, joined the Red Sparks in July 2023 on a one-season contract. She bid farewell to her South Korean teammates on March 27. The Megatron then signed a 100,000 US dollar contract with Jakarta Bin, having been introduced as the club's latest recruit for the 2024 Pro Liga competition. With Megawati and other new players on board, the State Intelligence Agency Club aims to clinch this year's Pro Liga title. Now, Megawati's recent highlights probably not just joining the uh, South Korean club, but in 2017 Southeast Asian Game or Sea Games, she in the semifinal she contributed in the highest points when she was playing Vietnam, and that also the result is for the Indonesia to qualify for the final after the last time we actually get got to the final in 1991. And again, Megawati has been around in the uh, Southeast uh, Asian countries, namely here, of course, in Indonesia. And then she also played for Supreme Shonburi E-Tech in Vietnam. And then went over to uh, Thailand. I'm sorry, that is Thailand, Supreme Chonburi Tech. And then in Vietnam, Ha Pu Tan Hoa. And then last, of course, with South Korean team Daejeon Red Sparks. And of course, she is going to be now home in Indonesia. It's going to be very exciting to see her uh, in action. So make sure we are following closely very much on her career. All right, now we're going to move on to the next news, which is from basketball, where Polita Jaya Jakarta defeated High Tech Basketball Club 99-81 to at the Asian Basketball Champions League in Mongolia. Meanwhile, Prawira Harum Bandung beat home team Bishrel Medal 83-66. Polita Jaya Jakarta turned in a strong performance in the first round of the Basketball Champions League or BCL Asia qualifiers as they defeated high-tech basketball team 99-81. Reza Guntara played brilliantly by scoring five of six three-pointers for Polita Jaya and he also scored a total of 20 points in the game. Polita Jaya's new signing, Jaquari McLaughlin, also scored 20 points and four rebounds and five assists while Andakara Prastawa netted 12 points. Elsewhere, Freddie Lish scored 25 points, including five from 100 threes. Moses Morgan notched 14 points and four rebounds, while Marcus Elliott had 11 points, four rebounds, plus five assists. The two teams will play again today, with High Tech facing Adroit Singapore and Pelita Jaya battling Ulan Batar Sak Broncos. And another game, Indonesian Basketball League or EBL 2023 champions Prawira Harum Bandung defeated hosts Bishrel Medal 83-66 at the UG Arena in Ulaanbaatar. Antonio Hester performed brilliantly by contributing 21 points for Prawira Bandung, followed by Brandon Francis and Yuda Saputra who scored 19 points each. Bishrel Medal manager Tamjit Batushfin 
made several adjustments after halftime to catch up with Prawira Harum Bandung by substituting several shooters. Gentile Silla alone stood out than most of his squad courtesy of his accurate three-point shooting. He also scored the most points for Bishrelt. Prawira Harum Bandung is now set to face Hong Kong Eastern representatives while Bishrelt medal will face NS Martrix Deers. All right, still from basketball, but this time we're going to go to the NBA, where Anthony Davis scored 19 points to help the Los Angeles Lakers beat the Washington Wizards 125-120 to on Wednesday night for the eighth victory in nine games. Anthony Davis scored 19 of his 35 points in the first quarter and had 18 rebounds, leading the Los Angeles Lakers to beat the Washington Wizards 125-120 to for their three-game winning streak. LeBron James had 25 points and 9 assists, while Rui Hachimura scored 19 points for the Lakers against his former team. Davis was 10 of 17 from the field and made 15 free throws without a miss. Jordan Poole led Washington with 29. The Lakers are 9th in the Western Conference and must win twice in the play-in tournament to make the main playoff bracket. It was point differential. Charlotte is worse. So this is another possession where nobody touches it. All oh, about Jordan Poole. I mean, it was pretty stuck. LeBron gets it back. Look at this. And D'Lo shoots a three. Boy, the Lakers were fortunate and it came right back to him. Then D'Lo spinning and smacked. Who's my house the last nine for the Wiz? Yes, yeah, speaking of the Lakers and the Western Conference play in tournament, this is how uh, the current uh, look to the play in for the West. So the 7th place Phoenix Suns, they're going to go against 8th place Sacramento Kings and the 9th place LA Lakers will have to place uh, will have to play 10th place Golden State Warriors. Again, it's a very tight race right now for those teams that are still outside the bubble to go into the playoffs which is going to start in April 20th. Make sure you are also following very very closely for that. All right guys, that's a wrap for sports right now. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to have more information including our signature segment See the Stories. So keep it here on the 3R News Show on C Today. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the C Morning Show. It is just past 6 of the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam. Makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh 
sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Uh, well, these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. Hello everyone, we are from The Jupiters! Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di Teman Bicara Mama. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Welcome back to the our new show on Sea. Today it is our final hour, which means it is time for see a see the Ramadan story segment. And you're still with me. Hi, Surya. Yes, hi, and I'm Ranga Estemat. And for the latest updates, you can also follow us on Instagram, X, and YouTube at Sea Today News. And also with us, I'm Krishna Sam. But before anything else, let's see what is making the headlines for today. Some 24 people were trapped, and one person was found dead in a severely tilted building in Taiwan's Hualien County. A Brunei-based infrastructure company is planning to build a high-speed train network across three countries in Kalimantan, namely Indonesia, Brunei and Malaysia, called the Trans-Borneo Railways. Indonesian volleyball athlete Megawati Hangestri, who hails from Jember, officially joined Jakarta Bin after a contract with the South Korean V-League club that joined Jung Wanjang Red Spark. Ended. And we're about to head into see the Ramadan stories where we'll have a chat about money bouquet, especially ahead of Eid with the founder of Sihedon, a business that specializes in decorations using banknotes. Hello and welcome back to this year our new show at the Sampur Signature segment, See the Ramadan Stories. Now, with Idul Fitri drawing nearer, what are you most looking forward to this season, Ranga? Of course, the food. 
right? At uh, eight feet three after the prayer, and mm -hmm. then you just go home, and then you just go crazy, right? Do you still receive money, 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 money? Oh, of course. I mean, I. <laughs> or are you giving away the now money, money, money? Now we're giving money, away money. the money, right? <laughs> this is the age now where we're just giving away the money. But before, when we were younger, I think this is something that we always look forward to. Oh yeah. Exactly. Sure now does. speaking of Eid and money, do you know that there is a unique business that combines money with interesting decorations? Now joining us in the studio is Ardian Hermawan, the founder of Sea Head On Money Bouquet, which specializes in decorations using banknotes or bills. Yeah, Adrian, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Thanks for coming I'm in. So happy to be here. Well, I am really excited to be <laughs> here because I've, I've noticed that there's been a trend. Yes. There's been a trend like whenever I see bouquets now, whenever it's like a standing ovation bouquet and mm. shows, or when somebody graduates, or even in. Um, you know, uh, engagements and weddings. Yeah. Wedding, anniversary. I, yeah, I see money be, you know, it used to be beautiful flowers, but now <laughs> right, it's turned this, into Yeah, flowers. this time around it's different. Yeah, right? so uh, leading up to Eid, before anything else, how's business going now in, <laughs> during Ramadan, going to Eid? The business is quite good because we just uh, sell hampers too for Eid mm -hmm. and we already sell like sold 9000 pieces already wow like 9, for pieces. this kind of thing ah so this is the this is the ramadan the, hamper yeah this yeah. is the ramadan hamper so this one already sold 9000 pieces yeah 9000 sold to it very good business is good yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is good. and when, what about the rest yeah the rest is also good because in it usually parents or husband will give their family money and mm -hmm. we try to decorate it so uh, it can be a very good product to show on mm. social media too. Oh yes, very Yeah, very. show me one. the money, baby. <laughs> right, see that one, Kai's got one going. So this is right? the this is the eat hamper. This right? is the eat hamper, yeah. Oh my. So the inside, what you can actually? Well, I, I don't want to jump into. Oh, yeah. uh, but is yeah. it money as yeah. well? Is it, I'm, I'm, just, no. I'm sure it's money inside, no? Oh, no, so no. this you have it's, choices. Yeah, it's just ninety nine thousand. It's. So affordable oh. because inside it's only coffee, sajada, oh, I see. Uh, golden I see. spoon, but it's for corporate hampers. So right. we can oh. custom like the greeting cards, logo, and everything. Mm -hmm. Ah, corporate hampers is a very, very good idea yeah. because businesses usually have to send hampers. I know. To, During this not month. just to 10 people, but hundreds of people. Yeah, and we provide like a one stop solution, one stop service. So you can just give me all the address uh -huh. mm -hmm. and we can send the send the hampers to the receivers directly. Ah, yeah, so the, so it's a one-stop thing. You just pay for it and right. then it'll be And then be you delivered. do the rest. I will write all the gift cards. And yes, and it arrives there. Pretty. That's an Pretty. idea. Uh, I have an idea now. <laughs> well, um, uh, Ardian, can you now just tell us a little bit more about how this uh, business uh, started and how long ago did it start? So I start this business uh, from 2018. Okay. I was still in the dormitory. Uh, I was. <laughs> I start this from a very small room because it's graduation season at that time, and I need a lot of money. So <laughs> I try to try what things I should do to earn money. So I make this money bouquet for my friend at first, okay. but then my friend posts it to social media, and it become viral. And I oh, wow. and I make really? Instagram account and oh. all the views likes. <laughs> and then you made your it own just, business. Yeah, it yeah. Like blew up. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, friend. <laughs> yeah, thank you, friends. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, friend. Well, how did you, though, um, once you decided you wanted to make money bouquet, how did you learn to make, you know, to fold, right. See, create we money bouquets? Right, know. Because this is very delicate. It's very money. Very delicate. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to use the money once you receive the bouquets, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At first, uh, I see a lot of Instagram account from overseas. Because there are so many florists, like in China and in Malaysia, use money for a bouquet and stuff. So mm. I try to learn by just watch the Instagram reels and posts. And I tried a lot of trials and errors, but I did it. <laughs> wow. wow. Really, everything just really cool. learning by, yeah, by This yeah. must have been someone very special to you. <laughs> to make, like, <laughs> because yeah. this is... Uh, an investment. So, yes. <laughs> because, you know, the, the, you, you could have just bought for like, you know, you could have just bought a bouquet, but you actually made the bouquet. Yeah, because I need the money. <laughs> also, your friend bought it for yeah, you. The oh, boy. the friend bought oh, it for you. Go, you. I thought it was somebody special <laughs> yes, that you yes, gave. Yes. Ah. So, the business um, mindset. Nice. 
kicked in right away. Nice. Very good, nice, Ardian. Nice. Now, Ardian, we know that you offer money bouquet and uh, money cakes. Yeah. What kind of materials do you use to have these um, two to kind of mash them up? It's just a similar materials like scissor tape and mm -hmm. preserved flowers, mm -hmm. chocolate. I see Ferrero Rocher here. Yeah. Oh, but, <laughs> nice touch. Yeah. Okay. And like uh, glue gun. Oh, oh, okay. How do you keep the money safe? Like, how, how, do you, how do you preserve the money? Yeah, I will cover the money with the plastic. So, all the money, I make sure all the monies are safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I will not put the glue into the money. So, I will cover the money first with the plastic. Mm, Ranga, can I'm you... I'm going to show you. How so? So, so... So this one is basically like rolled, right? But Ranga yeah, has got in his hands <laughs> 100,000 notes, by the way. 100,000 notes, you guys and see? Looking this? like flowers, yeah. very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So this, uh, can you tell us how many 100,000 bills are it's, actually in this? It's only 30 bills and... 30 bills, okay. It is our best-selling product because uh, with only 30 bills, you can make this big, giant yeah. yeah. Okay, with only 30 bills. So 30 bills is 3, three million, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, th uh, and then um, uh, it's it's really interesting. We have to talk business because then you have to. <laughs> there you go. You have to charge for the cash. Yeah. Yep. yep and then yep. some. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. wow, I think it's just great because it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Looks more than 30 bills here. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did you get your imp uh, inspiration, Ardian, when you're doing uh, bouquet and cake designs? Yeah, as I you said before, joke. I always see like many overseas Instagram account. Okay. And I, but I never want to duplicate them. I just mm. want to gather all the ideas and make my new, uh, my new personal touch ah. with the bouquet and my products. So it's originally me. Right. I never duplicate any kind What's of. What's the biggest bouquet slash cake? that a client has asked you to make? It's around 500 bill notes. 500 bill notes? Yeah, it's of 100, so 000. big and I only need like six hours to make that because... 500 hours. notes? Yeah, I know. Of 100,000 rupiah? Yeah, 100. 500 of them. I thought like 500 or 5,000. Okay. <laughs> so 500 of 100,000. Right. Wow. Is everything in Rubia or have you ever gotten clients who want it like foreign currencies? Yeah, of course. Uh, a oh. lot of customers nice. send their currencies to me. So uh, usually they send drivers or <gasps> someone to send the currencies to me. Oh, like USD, okay. Singapore dollars, Australian dollars. Oh, or a mix of around the world. Have yeah, you ever had right. to do that? Like a mix of a couple of countries? Yeah. Ah, wow. okay. something okay. special. Maybe yes. that person lived in a couple of different countries. Ah, very cool. <laughs> very cool. How long does it usually take for you to make a bouquet or a cake, depending on how big it is? Because you right. said that everything is already preset and you and uh, made simple. Yeah, initially back in 2018 when I was alone, I need like six to seven hours to make just one product. Just because one product. Yeah. How big? Just a small one. Okay, six oh, wow. hours, wow. Yeah, but now uh, already already improved and I already have employees. And uh -huh. wow. <laughs> so I just need like 30 minutes to one hour to make one bouquet. So this is your full-time yeah. business here? Yeah, now this After is full-time business. After six years? Yeah. yeah you know, that's just so cool. Wow. So, I think this is a great story. Just curious though, uh, d during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic time period, mm. did you, how was business then? Of course, my business is not so good at that time, but okay. my parents helped me a lot, and mm. they're calling. They were calling everyone they know they know to buy my product. <laughs> <laughs> Love of parents, yeah. yes. Thank my you, parents, parents Thank helped you, parents. me a lot, including all the new money bills. Yeah, uh, my parents always uh, support me with all the money bills. Because oh. it has to be new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to... Yeah, it has yeah. to be new bills. Of course, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Right. Otherwise, it's so, not so, be free. Um, so, that's, that's, uh, that's tricky, right? So, let's say I'm a customer who wants to order from you. Do I just tell you, okay, look, Adrian, I want this particular model and I want it in 50,000 bills, let's say. Do I just send you the money and then you extract it from the bank or do I send you the cash? No, you just need to transfer me. Mm -hmm. That's why we, I provide one-stop service. You just transfer the money oh. and I will 
uh, Toto with the delivery service too, mm -hmm. and you just receive the gift without. Ah, I'm I'm really interested on on the technique, you know, um, on how you get to fold the money and keep the money intact because there are some crazy folds of money that I've seen. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But but it keeps the money intact. So how, what's the secret? What's the secret of the money? Yeah, how keeping to them how do you fresh, keep, crisp, keep, and... keeping them, you know, um, uh, keeping them easily to be made. Oh, me, I I use plastic. So, oh, yeah, yeah. so it's all the to plastic. Cover them, all the plastic all to the... cover them. Okay. Okay. Uh, as long as you bad. already cover it with plastic, you can make it as many shapes as you want. Mm, I see. Mm. So the plastic is the secret. Yeah, the that plastic covers is the, secret. The, the bills. Yeah. All right. So now, um, what's the most you know so far challenging decoration that a customer has asked yeah. you to do requested? Oh. Uh, I think a year ago, I received an order that I have to make like three meters tall money cake. And... Three meters tall? It was a challenge because the customer want it to be done like for seven hours only. So they just give me time seven hours to finish that In kind of cake. So it was a last minute order? Yeah, it's a last minute order. We do uh, accept urgent orders too. Oh, oh okay. All right. Three meters cake. Is that for a <laughs> Three wedding? Three meters. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. for a wedding. You can't even cut to that cake. <laughs> you gotta you get cut? a ladder. It's the money. You're no, it's the money that I'm cutting. Yeah. <laughs> but with the so money. you succeeded, right? Yeah, I succeeded. Okay, okay. Oh, good idea. Wow. <laughs> How promising do you find the prospect uh, of the money bouquet business? Can you talk to us about the, the flow of the orders? Because I know Ramadan is big season, as you yeah, mentioned yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. 9,000 already seasons there. Are uh, what other seasons are very popular in terms of money bouquet? Or is it more of a one-stop thing? Uh, I think for the money bouquet, it's just popular like for Valentine's and Christmas, graduation. But apart from that, I already opened my flower academy. So I teach oh, to... No. Ah. Yeah, I teach to... In my uh, months when I'm not so busy, I teach uh, all my students to make this bouquet. Ah, so maybe Ranga, we, we should join his class. <laughs> exactly. Class, right? I mean, this is something that's, that's very promising. You just said, right? Nine thousand orders just in the month of Ramadan. <laughs> oh, my goodness! Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And this is nine thousand because it is oh, very affordable, and you can do it, you know, yeah. corporate, yeah. and it looks great. Yeah. Do we still have time to place some orders before? Of course. Of okay. course. Okay. That's of good. Course. I just cleared that out. <laughs> All right. So, um, where can we find you on social media if we were, uh, if we were to, you know, order from yes, you? Yes, please. Or uh, want to join your classes? Oh, you can follow me on Instagram at Sihedon. Mm -hmm. And you can follow my Hamper's Instagram too at The Booster Gift. It's my sister brand company. Ah, ah there, you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, and you can follow too at my Sihedon Flower Academy for my lessons. Ah, <laughs> very good. I'm really very excited. Good. Is it online though? Or no, offline? there are two types of classes online, offline, okay. also cool. group and individuals, private. Right. There are so many choices. Catering to your needs. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Adrian, for coming. Thank you for thank coming. You so thank you for sharing. Thank you for showing us the beautiful um, bouquet, a yeah. money bouquet, right? Thank you. And uh, yeah, this that thing is really, really. Um, it's really nice. It's calling my name right there. <laughs> you like the bag. I like it. I like he it. wants the bag. He just wants to carry the bag around like this. I go home with it. <laughs> All right, guys, that is Ardian, and uh, I hope you get to see what beautiful bouquets the, uh, the, these are, and hopefully that you're gonna place some orders too, right? Yeah. All right, and the next one, see the Ramadan stories will continue after the break. So please stay tuned. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to 
City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature. Only on see Indonesia. Come see the beauty. Only on see Indonesia. Only on see Indonesia. Oh, these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. I save up my salary to buy this bag. from The Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di teman bicara mama. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Ini tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Hey guys, welcome back and you're still watching See the Ramadan Stories. Now, Eid al-Fitri is the most anticipated moment among Muslims around the world. The tradition of Eid al-Fitri al in Indonesia is a moment to forgive each other and share happiness. Eid al-Fitri is the culmination of a celebration of happiness and victory from a series of worship performed during the month of Ramadan. The tradition of Eid al-Fitri in Indonesia will begin in the morning where Muslims will perform Eid prayers in congregation in the mosque, followed by visiting family members and neighbors while shaking hands and forgiving each other for past mistakes. This tradition is carried out as a symbol of peace and harmony between people. Eid al-Fitri, or back to fitrah, will be perfect if the erasure of our sins to Allah is followed by the erasure of our sins to our fellow humans or compatriots, friends, families, not only that, during Eid al-Fitr. The Muslims usually provide a traditional food, snacks, and gifts, which are often given to children and those in need. So what are your family Eid al-Fitr traditions? 
Not much. We go, we go to the mosque in the morning, go back to my parents' house normally, um, and then of course run down and everything else. Because uh, my mom is from Padang, uh, West Sumatra. Ah. My dad is from Palembang, South Sumatra. So there's got to be um, a pempe, that one for sure. And of course the rendang, homemade. So do you do like salam salaman or uh, sungkeman? Not lately. Yeah, we kind of move. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Now that you mentioned it, we have. My family used to go all really, really traditional. We do the <laughs> you're right, very you're right. Indonesian way, uh, not just like shaking hands, right. but so like you, sungkeman. You right, go you to the it, yeah. elder. So go it's like the... a long line. Yes, right. it yes, starts. Yes. It starts with uh, it, the eldest my, in yeah the eldest in the, the family. So right. so if it's just my um my my own my own little family, it would be my dad is sitting first, and my mom would be mm -hmm. like some command to him, right. and then he would she would be sitting on the next yeah, chair, yeah, and then I would yeah. go yeah. to my parents, so and then I'd be right. sitting next chair, and then my sister would go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the that's... wrong as line. With, <laughs> but, yeah. Before you actually get to the food. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've we've done that. Uh, my family still does that with with our grandparents, right? Can yeah, I imagine? think that's a tradition. You're right. Uh, can you You're imagine right. how many people that? Because I have yeah. 19 cousins. <laughs> wow. That's a good one. Wow. Well, so we are, we're talking about another Idul Fitri tradition here. And Idul Fitri is indeed one of the most anticipated celebrations for Muslims, known for traditions such as, such as family photos and the religious holiday allowance, or oh. THR. Who doesn't love that? Yes, here we go, of course. THR, or the religious holiday allowance, has become an integral part of Idul Fitri celebrations. It shows kindness and compassion. The tradition involves elder relatives giving cash to younger family members and reflects values of generosity and care cherished by the Indonesian people. In addition to Tehayar, family photos are key Eid tradition. Families would dress in their finest attire, gather and capture memories together. The tradition symbolizes togetherness, happiness, and harmony. Dress code. The, yeah, dress code, dress code too. Your family. Okay. I'm sure you. Yes, we actually got our dress. I mean, the the stuff that we are gonna be wearing already about three weeks ago already. Wow. Two weeks. Yeah, two, me two too. Me ago. and my girl. Everything set. Is that color coordinated? Color coordinated. Or? Usually it's color coordinated. And family. Yeah. yeah. You know, one family's that color, it's, and then this family that. Color. But it's so viral because <laughs> last year everyone was using sage green. Right, and this like, year is. Was, and this year apparently it's um. It's the baby blue. The baby blue? <laughs> it's the baby blue. Yes, yes, baby blue. Right? <laughs> That's what social media is saying. But hey, yeah. I, I'm going purple. I'm going lilac. You're going purple. I don't remember. Purple. Oh, yeah, so your, your family Yeah, we've decided purple. on purple. My girls and I have decided ah, on purple. Okay. Yeah, we, we go all white. You go all white. This, this, this. Ah, so, so yeah. do, you, do you have family who celebrate Eid as well? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, so it's mostly for my mom's side because mm -hmm. I'm closer to my mom and we go to Bandung. Ah. So you go yeah. the day of or sorry? You go the day of to Bandung or yeah, prior? definitely, definitely. Uh. Uh, we, oh, or oh, going to Bandung? Well, it depends. Maybe two days before. It depends on the work. All oh, right. right. Okay. So it depends on the work, but we usually go to Bandung. It's a fun time. It's mm. yes, yes, different yes, from yes, Jakarta yes. because it's a bit colder, and you get <laughs> to do a lot of shopping. You can oh, spend your air, right? Yeah, yeah, you get all time. those fashion no. outlets. And the food is awesome. Uh, uh, Bandung, it's like, so. Yeah. so we might we might catch up in Bandung then. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Maybe, maybe exactly. Woo. Right, and of course we're talking about food. And in Indonesia, Eid al Fitr is a special moment that is synonymous with various typical traditions. Apart from celebrating victory after a month of fasting, one of the most anticipated traditions is eating ketupat or rice cakes. Yes. Yes, here we go. Ketupat is a rice-based food that is wrapped in the webbing of young coconut leaves. It is usually served with various side dishes, such as opor ayam or chicken in coconut milk, spicy potato sambal, meat, and so on. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I thought the producers would have challenged us by now to make ketupats. You know, you know what ketupats oh, right. look like, right? Uh huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I was I was really excited about that because I I was literally talking to uh, to uh, one of my helpers at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asking her, "Can you make ketupat? You know the the you know the 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 cube that you see that yeah. is made of the coconut leaves? I really yeah. want to know how to make it." And I was like, "Can you teach me how to make it?" And she was like, "Sure." No, do you have the leaves? And I was like, "No, I don't have the leaves." Yeah. See, w making the ketupat is one thing, and then making making sure that the leaves are actually uh, shaped that way. I think that's also yeah. a challenge on its own. Right? Yeah. And the tradition of eating ketupat has become a part of Eid al Fitr celebrations here in Indonesia. It symbolizes harmony and togetherness amid differences. Every year, the Indonesian community practices the tradition of sharing ketupat with family and neighbors. In addition to being an expression of gratitude and strengthening of relationships, 
This tradition also reflects hope for mutual forgiveness. It's a good thing you can buy everything nowadays. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, I want to know how to make it. It's better to make it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, at home, we, we always make it. Well, not but, you know, we always make it. Uh -huh. And it just tastes so good. It only there lasts for a couple of hours, though. If you eat it the next then, day, yes. then it, it's They're going to go bad. It yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, during that time, especially that after it just cooked, and you mix it with the curry. Mm -hmm. and... Oh, yeah, with the rendang, the hot pot. <laughs> yeah, everything else, <laughs> just, just, uh, you just jump into that one plate, and then yeah. that's but, it. But we're going to talk about <laughs> it'll feature meals and foods, right? Very, very soon, right? Right. Right, Chris? Uh, yes, Chris? of course. Uh, yeah, really? An hour, an hour before break time, right? <laughs> but we're not going to eat it, hours. but we're going to talk, gonna about, talk it. about it. We're going to talk about it. All right, guys, see the stories. We'll continue after the break. Stay with us on the three-hour news show on See Today. Talk. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam. Makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia.
these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. by Genesis to buy this bag. Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team, saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di teman bicara Mama. Welcome back to the Spirit News Show on Sea Today. To still with us on the Sea, the Ramadan stories. Now, Indonesian Police Chief General Listio Sigit Prabowo, along with Armed Forces Commander General Agus Subianto, have inspected traffic flow at the Gilimanuk Port, Bali, early Thursday. The generals were not only monitoring the flow from the air during the homecoming period, but also performing evaluations to maintain a safe homecoming trip. Now, both the police chief and armed forces commander have mobilized their forces to maintain a safe and comfortable Eid homecoming. The national police chief assured that inspections will also be done for traffic flow on land, sea and air, in particular across Java and Bali. Bali is beautiful indeed. Beautiful I'm sorry, I've just indeed. lost focus and I was supposed to uh, look at the generals. <laughs> they look very comfortable. Very comfortable. Out. But that view though. Yeah. Wait, no, and I'm still talking about the generals. I'm still talking about the generals and uh, the shades. The shades. shades. <laughs> it's, it's the, the Top Gun shades. Top Gun shades. Oh my God. The Top Gun shades. <laughs> and we have more stories of course. State-owned railway operator PT Kereta Api Logistic is providing PET delivery services or pet delivery services during Eid Homecoming this year. Oh, pet delivery pet services. Delivery. <laughs> pet okay. we're, we're about an hour and a few minutes away from uh, breakfast. Yes, yes. I Our need focus my, I need my little... pets delivered to me right. to Bandung. You know. Oh, so man. if you have pets, PET or CATs, maybe DOG. <laughs> That's a good one, Kai. PET, oh, it's so classy. I have CATs. You have CATs, DOGs, and you feel reluctant to leave your CATs or DOGs at home or daycare and refuse to worry about their safety, then you might want to consider their services. Yes, our news team, Fahrian Bahri and Ferry Ahmad, have the details about how to bring your pets by train. Indonesian Muslims have a tradition of embarking on homecoming trips during Adelphid. However, for pet owners such as myself, leaving behind our furry companions can be a source of confusion and worry. Questions about the safety and well-being of our pets while we are away linger, adding a layer of concern to our homecoming plans. But it turns out that pet owners don't need to worry anymore this year. Because PT Kereta Api Logistik or Kalog is now providing animal shipping services to other regions ahead of it homecoming. By the way, I haven't introduced to my pet yet. Its name is Yupi. Yupi is about to go to Bandung, West Java. During homecoming period, some people might feel confused, sad, and cannot want to leave their lovely pet alone at home or daycare. But if you want to go home during homecoming period by using public transportation, especially train, the authority has a way to send your lovely pet to your home safely. 
Decalogue Pet Delivery Service is a solution for those who need to return to their hometowns by using public transportation, especially railways. However, several requirements must be met by those who wish to send their pets using rail freight services. First, make sure the pet is in good health. Second, prepare a durable pet cargo career fit for its size and provide it with sufficient food and drink. Third, pet cargo carrier can be fastened with cable ties to be more secure. Then, fill in the data for administration and make the payment. Ini berangkat dari keinginan masyarakat bahwa pengiriman pengiriman hewan ini merupakan keinginan yang sangat tinggi dari masyarakat. Makanya KAI Logistik mengakomodir kebutuhan tersebut untuk pengiriman hewan dengan nyaman dan aman. Kalau biasanya sedapat mungkin jangan terlalu mendekat menjelang lebaran ya. Jadi upayakan di bawah hamil lima ya untuk pengiriman hewan ini. Karena kereta barang ini ada masanya libur dan juga di hari-hari besar rasional juga libur biasanya. Sebaiknya memang dibuktikan dengan surat keterangan sehat dari dokter hewan. Kemudian uh, si pengirim wajib membawa makanan dan uh, minuman untuk si hewan tersebut selama di perjalanan. Standar pet cargo ya. Nah itu uh, sebagai syaratnya. PT Kalak will ensure that pets will be shipped after checking all requirements. Shippers do not need to worry as the officers will ensure all pets are safe during the trip. However, PT Kalok doesn't accept shipments of endangered animals such as peacocks and birds of paradise. Kalau kita ada ketentuan 1 sampai 10 kilo pertama itu uh, tarifnya 100.000. Nah, kilo berikutnya nanti tergantung uh, kota tujuan. Kalau khusus hewan memang kita no claim. Tidak ada claim. Nah, makanya sebelum si pelanggan ini kita bikin kesepakatan dulu bahwa memang kita ada ketentuan yang tadi, yang saya, saya ratakan tadi, dari kemasan segala macam, e, nanti setuju, kita memang tidak ada klaim kalau untuk hewan, khusus hewan ya. Once the process is complete, customers can also monitor delivery process through real-time tracking via the KAI website at www.kalogistik.co.id slash tracking or by the app. Customers only need to wait a maximum of two days until the pet arrives at the intended service point. After we have registered and paid, the authority will send your pet to the location safely. Don't forget to pick up your pet to the nearest service point and don't forget to bring your identity card and also deliver your receipt. During this year's Eat Homecoming period, customers can use the service until April 4th and will reopen after it on April 17th. Fahrian Bahri, Ferry Ahmad, for C Today. I can't do it. No. no. I just did it again uh, about pet hotel, three, four though. months. Yeah, pet hotel. But this it's is something delivery. like this that you actually bring your, your pet to travel yeah. with you. I don't know. I'm ne I've, I've never because tried. I, I, yes. I did that when I was moving from Malaysia to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. ah. but, but then my cat was in the airplane. Yeah. All right. So, so with not, you. Not with a service. Yeah. With, uh, in the same airplane, right? Right. And then we had to go through customs and <coughs> the cat had to go through customs. Mm -hmm. It's a whole ordeal. It's quite, uh, let's say, difficult. Uh, it is. Yeah. I, I can only but. imagine. But my only thought is if you're traveling by train, right, that's a couple of hours. Mm. Are these cats, are some, is somebody going to feed the cat or do we leave like some food inside of the carrier? Or? That's what you do. That you uh, leave the food in no, the because uh, I just remember about uh, 12 years ago when I come back from the U.S. to here, I brought my uh, DOG. Your DOG. <laughs> DOG. So, so yeah, uh, my DOG was my dog was actually coming with me. So on the belly of the plane, she was traveling on the belly yeah. of the plane. So I, I, I had to put the uh, her food because when we yeah, had food and water, we, again. yeah, food and water. So when we stopped over in uh, Taipei, I think it was, then somebody from the um, the airline right. was gonna feed her that food and. Uh, the oh, water too. So when we got to Chicago, yeah, yes, was somebody did it. in charge of yes, somebody's in charge. Yes, yes. Wow, exactly. what a yeah. job! What a job! Yeah. I, I wonder what kind of pets they see in the belly of the plane. Is it D O G C H E or S N A K E? Snake. A lot of people have snakes now. 
<laughs> or is it Crocos? Yeah. No, the Crocos, C R O C I. We should totally do a spelling bee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next story. The Indonesian Embassy in Moscow had partnered with the city's spiritual Muslim community to host the annual Tenda Ramadan 2024. The event featured a cultural program called Malam Indonesia Selamat Berbuka Puasa. In the spirit of Ramadan, the Indonesian Embassy and Moscow spiritual Muslim community held the annual Tenda Ramadan 2024 on March 28. The festivity featured cultural presentations such as tourism videos of Indonesia, a timeline video depicting 74 years of diplomatic relations between Indonesia, Quran recitations, testimonial on fastings, and Islamic songs performed by Indonesian students in Russia. The event comments with Moscow Spiritual Muslim Community Chair Mufti Ildar Hazrat Al Dinov expressing appreciation for the Indonesian embassy participation, aiming to strengthen ties between the two countries. During the opening ceremony, Indonesian ambassador to Russia, Jose Antonio Morato Tavares, offered condolences for the recent terrorist attack at Moscow Krokus City Hall on March 22. He hoped that attendees would experience the joyous atmosphere of Ramadan in Indonesia, emphasizing the significance of Selamat Berbuka Puasa as an expression of empathy and appreciation, as well as prayers for help during the fasting month. A fourth-year student from Moscow Aviation Institute, Muhammad Reza Shah Pahlevi, signaled the time for iftar by chanting the Japanese call to Maghrib prayer. Visitors then enjoyed a variety of dishes including pumpkin soup, beef stroganoff, dates, cakes, and biscuits. The feast was accompanied by religious songs performed by the El Santri group, comprising seven Indonesian student association members in Russia. The event concluded with an Indonesia theme quiz and a competition to win 10 souvenirs. Organized by the Moscow Spiritual Muslim Community since 2006, Tenda Ramadan stands as Russia's sole iftar event, featuring cultural performances by foreign diplomatic representatives or community organizations. And that looks like fun, breaking your fast you know, yeah. uh, outside of your... Outside. Wait, uh, so in Moscow, it w it was it would already be springtime, right? Is it? Or do they still coming go by winter Coming is still, yeah, it's spring right now. Is it still the winter clock, winter hours? I, I need to check. It depends, yes. Because during winter time, it's actually a nice time to fast. Yeah, very short. you ever fast during winter? Yes, very nice, loved it. Yeah, me too. D during the winter time, it's very yeah. short, I mean, not very short, but shorter. Yeah. Because yeah. the day, dusk is about what, 7 a.m. in the morning, 8? It's about 6.30-ish. 6.30 to 7. Mm -hmm. And then 4 p.m. is already, Already you know, iftar. Sunset. Iftar. <laughs> nice. But some countries, it's even longer. Yeah. Like yeah. in Malaysia, it's an hour yeah, in, longer. Uh, in the yeah. summertime, you know, in the summertime in, in California, that's my experience. Right. Um, 12 hours? <laughs> more, right. More. So the, yeah. the the sun sets about 9.40, 9.45 yeah. p.m. Well, oh. Wow. Well, it's a good thing that we live in the equator because in the equator, it's pretty much always the same. Very, very yeah. consistent. Because we only have one time zone. We don't change times, winter or summer. So, yeah. We're lucky. Yeah. Very, very lucky. But actually, those who have winter and experience winter fasting, you guys are luckier. Mm -hmm. Very lucky. So that means for uh, there are countries who actually, during winter time, they don't get sun at all, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I can't I'm, imagine. I'm not sure so what So do they the... fast at all during Ramadan? No, okay. That's that's the question for another yeah, day, but it's yeah, just a for speculation, someone, right? For another ex yeah. expert, maybe. Yeah. Thinking about it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. right. And speaking about celebrating Eid <laughs> and, and, you know, breaking fast, uh, during your fasting in other countries, you need more than 2 billion Muslims around the world come together to celebrate the holy month of Ramadan. Now, though they mostly pray the same way, diverse cultures and traditions are practiced by many Muslims around the world. The following is the same difference of Ramadan traditions from around the world. Mm, love to see this.
Welcome to the holy month of Ramadan, where the beginning is full of mercy, the middle is forgiveness, and the end is the freedom from fire. It is the month full of festivals and traditions, where all the Muslims from all around the world are overflowing in joy and happiness, right from the dawn until the dusk. This are the Ramadan traditions from all around the world. The first one is Egypt. This country is gleaming and twinkling in colorful lights during Ramadan, as sparkling lanterns light up in the evening. Known as Fanus, the tradition stemmed from the Fatimid Empire when Caliphate al Mu'is leading Allah was greeted with colorful lanterns as he arrived in Cairo. Today, these enchanting lanterns never fail to enliven the busy streets of Egypt throughout the holy month. Other than lanterns, there is also a century-old tradition of roaming the streets and banging drums every night to wake Muslims up for sahur, or meals eaten ahead of sunrise before they fast. They are called Uso Horoti. The tradition came from the Ottoman Empire, as there was still no microphone at the mosque back then. Other than Egypt, Uso Horoti is also practiced in many Muslim countries, such as Iraq, Pakistan, Lebanon, and Turkey. Indonesians also have been keeping this tradition alive and even modify it by singing Nashi or songs referring to Islamic belief. Leading up to the iftar time, many Muslims are often looking for sweet treats or snacks as Indonesians call it takjil. But in many Gulf countries, there is a certain tradition where the children are hunting for sweets in a very unique way, almost similar to the Halloween's trick or treat. Gergean is a long-standing cultural tradition that is celebrated on the 13th, 14th, and 15th day of Ramadan. In the evening, children dress up in Kuwaiti traditional clothes and go door to door to sing songs in exchange for nuts and candy. In Bahrain, it is called Ger Gaon. This golf tradition is celebrated to help children with their fasting and encourage them to fast every year. When it comes to Iraq, there is a tradition that dates back to hundreds of years ago. After breaking the fast, many Iraqi men will gather in large groups for a game of Mahabas, where a ring is passed around under a cloth and they must guess who has the ring based on their body languages. After many years of war, this classic tradition is making a comeback as Iraqis men are actively working to preserve this local culture. Ramadan is more than just about fasting and worshipping, but more than that, Ramadan is also about connecting with one's culture and traditions. And no matter how different the traditions are from all around the world, but one thing remains true. These traditions are the embodiment of all Muslims to get closer to the God during this holy month. Adelia Dinda and Dipta Dewi Guna for See Today.
Living in Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. Day business. Welcome back to the last segment of the show. I know we have entertainment news, but we have some fun news for you as well. One of the most common activities during the month of Ramadan is Nabuburit. The term Indonesians refer to as the moment or the time that leads up to breaking their fast. Yes. The and and yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like the 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before. Now many would engage in all sorts of activities during Nabuburit. And one of the most recommended places to spend the time is Taman Menteng. Now we have Arif Subakti and Oswald Nainggolan who are currently at that at the park to tell us more. Arif, please, what can you tell us? Well, hi Kai, Rangga and also Krishna. So this is the situation in Menteng Park Central Jakarta. I'm just look around and enjoying the uh, views here because uh, waiting for breaking the fast, I think it's going to be one more uh, hours before iftar or uh, the breaking the fast begin. So the situation in Menteng Park, of course, the Menteng Park itself is located in uh, Host Chokram Mionoto Street in Menteng, Central Jakarta. And this is one of the most favorite place for hangout also and also to enjoy uh, many kind of activities and culinary, of course, if you like to eat. And then during Ramadan, there are so many people came over here from children, families, and also young people who, who love to exercise before uh, waiting for uh, iftar. And then in Taman Menteng, you also can enjoy many exercise because it has many facilities. Uh, the first one is volleyball uh, court, basketball court, mini soccer, and of course, playground if you want to bring your children, also your family here. And there are also more activities in Taman Menteng, like cycling. Uh, some people came over here bringing their bicycle and also some people sitting around enjoy the garden in Menteng Park but however I would say that the situation in Taman Menteng is a bit crowded so if you want to come over here you better uh, prepare from 4 p.m. so you can get more space and also you will have more uh, space for parking area so uh, after uh, enjoying exercise and waiting for iftar you also can choose many kind of culinary in uh, Menteng Park because behind me I'm currently surrounded with many kind of uh, food uh, stall where like the first one I saw like uh, fried fried rice uh, menu where many people here also providing a uh, fried uh, rice such as uh, fried rice with uh, chicken, meatball, and also sausages. If you like uh, more veggie, you also can uh, order the veggie uh, fried rice. And if you like something sweet, you also can enjoy uh, many kind of uh, juice and also uh, many kind of sweet drink here. And yeah, I'm currently nearby one of the uh, stores here we have uh, banana grill and also we had uh, uh, some kind of drinks i think this is uh, one of a good option if you have fasting a whole day because they have many fresh juice and also many a uh, kind of ice and if you like something sweet to break your fasting as well you can enjoy the grilled banana and grilled bread with many kind of sweet toppings i think that's all uh, the situations in a uh, Menteng Park. I guess that's all the information back to you studio. Well, Arif, thank you so much for the update.
Um, yeah, it is. Taman Menteng is one of yep. the places uh, I love to hang out, especially in the evenings. They go until late at night, right? They, have they do. A lot of yes. Dudes there. Right. But I've only been there once, though. I oh, need to go there to a lot there more. Oh, you have to try their satay padang. Really? Their satay padang oh. there is so good. That's the satay Taman Menteng is a small alley that's next to Batik Chris there. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I go there, one of the things I love to have is nasi goreng gila. That's that's what I had last time. I, I was there. love that. That's it's it. So good, yeah. That's why I gotta go there more. Yeah. Yeah. They have everything from coconut yeah. uh, water, co like fresh. Coconut and do they wait? Do they open late uh, outside of Ramadan? Also? Yes. Okay. They they open a late afternoon to evening tonight. Time. Okay. Cool. All right. So well. We also have something else for you. Star Vision Plus is set to release its latest romance film, The Architecture of Love, which will hit theaters across Indonesia on April 30th. The Architecture of Love is a story based on a novel by Ika Natasa that is presented by Star Vision Plus, produced by Chan Parwes and directed by Teddy Surya Atmaja. Its soundtrack features songs from Raisa Anggiani, namely Losing Us, and Pepita Salim, namely Falling For You. It stars Putri Marino and Nicolas Saputra. Now the movie tells the story of a young writer, Raya Rizchat, played by Putri Marino, who lost her source of inspiration after her divorce from Alam, played by Arifin Putra. Raya moves to New York to find her inspiration, and one day she meets River Yusuf, played by Nicholas Saputra, who is a quiet man that does not like crowds. Now Raya and River become close, and this film comes out in cinemas in Indonesia on April the 30th. Ika Natasa loves New York. I think so. Because uh, I, I, re I realize that um, most of her books or the f movies that are based on her books are always New York. N yeah. Mm -hmm. Settings there. Settings. Yeah, yeah. It is a nice city. It is a great city. It is. Or, yeah. yeah. Everything. City of love. Like city you've got mail, you know? You've yeah, got mail. Yeah. yeah. All Serendipity. 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 Right? Oh. That was on the Empire State Building. Yeah. Right? One of my favorite movies. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. All right, now we have some more movie recommendations for you. This one comes from the Maxstream app titled Suka Duka Uni Una that you may want to consider while waiting for Iftar. Mm. Here we go. Uh, Suka Duka Uni Una follows Una, a girl from Padang, West Sumatra, who faces bullying at school because of her appearance. Mm -hmm. Una is determined to overcome her challenges and decides to transfer schools before finally finding support from her new friends. She later rediscovers her joy by creating contents and aspires to become a content creator. Una's dream, however, clashes with her religious upbringing, causing conflict with her parents. Nonetheless, Una embarks on a journey to reconcile with her past, prove herself to her parents, and pursue her dreams as a content creator. Speaking of which, right, content what creator. What do we do? I want what to show do? this. Look, look. We learned something new. We learned Actually, something new. Actually, we taught Ranga. I taught Ranga. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have, you know, uh, here we go. When you have an iPhone right now, there's actually a feature where you can actually take pictures, like a, a selfie like, like this, selfie. and you're not going to miss anyone in the picture. It yeah. doesn't matter how many people you have there by using the 1.5, one uh, the 0. Point, 0 0.5 uh, feature from your camera. Yeah, because if you go if you go on the front camera, it's right. always like so close, and yes. sometimes you can't like get... So now I can consider myself a content creator, right? right. Just because I know how to do this. Because yeah. again, when we were when I was doing this, I, I, very uh, I was very anxious because I don't know whether if everyone is in the frame or not. Mm. Yeah. But uh, you know, currently everybody's doing this. Because the 0 0.5 is basically the widest the option. The wider lens, right? Uh, the widest option on the phone. Yeah. And this has become viral recently because this there is such go. a Generation Z way of taking a selfie. And I learned, my sister made me learn it a couple of months <laughs> back. And now I can't live without it. And what just so happens to be a viral thing on social media is the Indonesian finance minister, Ibu Sri Mulyani, who recently tried out this new experience yes. by taking photos in the style of popular that's popular among Generation Z. How did it turn out? Let's find out on this story. Today's young generation, often referred to as Gen Z, has its own trends, including fashion and photography styles. The Gen Z style of taking pictures has gained attention, including some of the important figures in Indonesia. 
Indonesian Finance Minister Sri Mulyani recently embraced this trend by trying out a Gen Z style photo shoot. She not only posed in this manner, but also wrote a caption using Gen Z's popular term Menyala Abangku with fire emojis. A content creator who is also a staff member at Finance Ministry captured the moment when Sri Mulyani attempted the Gen Z pose. A behind-the-scenes video showed the ministry appearing excited to try out the new photo style. Surprisingly, Sri Mulyani tried it out later in the day with her fellow state officials, namely Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi, Health Minister Budi Sadikin, Coordinating Minister for Human Development and Cultural Affairs Muhajir Effendi, Public Works and Housing Minister Basuki Hadi Mulyono, Police Chief Listio Sigit Prabowo, Armed Forces Commander Agus Subianto, and Garuda Indonesia CEO Irfan Setia Putra. Look at that. Yeah, we love <laughs> to see, we love to learn new things. I yeah. mean, yeah. generations that they come up with the most. Right. Why didn't we think about it? It has to be no. them who thought about it, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, they were like the technology. Generation. But millennials Please. designed this. Do you get what I mean? That's true. Like, but they we... take it right. to the next step. Exactly. Yes, like, right. they have this way of seeing right. things beyond what we can expect. Yeah. Anyway, um, we have another story from Indonesian cinema. Aryu Bayu uh, succeeds Reza Rahadian as chairman of the Indonesian Film Festival, or FFE, for the 2024. 2026 period. This was announced during a National Film Day event held by the Indonesian Film Board or BPI on Saturday, March 30th. Additionally, actress Prilly Latukonsina was officially appointed as the chief executive of the 2024 Indonesian Film Festival. The Ministry of Research, Technology and Culture with the Indonesian Film Board or BPI held a media conference regarding their hopes and achievements for the future of the Indonesian film industry. Now, this took place during an event which commemorated the National Film Day at the Pasona Film Indonesia building. During the occasion, actor Aryo Bayu was inaugurated as chairman of the Indonesian Film Board for the 2024-2026 period, along with Prilly Latukonsina as chairman of the 2024 Indonesian Film Festival. The actress said on her personal Instagram account that she did not expect to be offered this position. She views it as an honor as well as an obligation to develop the Indonesian film industry. She also said that her goals align with those of Ario Bayu. The FFE is still set to become Indonesia's best film selection following the leadership transfer. BPI has also prepared a series of events ahead of this year's Indonesian Film Festival. I love that Prilly Latukonsina, she's everywhere, right? And I she feel like she, she has a lot of fire. She's mm -hmm. very passionate. She mm -hmm. has so much energy. She does so many things. Not a lot of people yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. No, the other day, um, I think it was last weekend, I was um, having an iftar in one of the malls here in South Jakarta. I, I saw Ario Bayu there. At ah. the, at one, in one second there, I didn't re recognize him because he was so tan. And then I saw <laughs> him just right now. He is tan. He is tan. Because <laughs> so, I haven't seen him for a while. Always been tan. In yeah, in movies or anything. It's how I was when I was. Gadis Krep. Gadis Krep. No, that I haven't seen. My fault. I gotta go see that. I know. Ah. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm fasting. This is like one of. This is actually like one right of now. the best. Best right now. Indonesian right now. series of all time. Gotta do that. I haven't seen it. Gotta do that. Either, so. No way. I will see it soon. I will Dude. see it soon. <laughs> I will see it. Soon. I pray both of you have time during the holidays to watch it on your own because Definitely. it's not kid friendly. Amen to that. Definitely. Drag your wives with you. <laughs> finally, watch it. Okay. All right. That does it for today's episode of the Three Hour News Show on C Today. Be sure to also follow us on social media through Instagram, X, and YouTube channel at C Today News. Stay connected with us. Yes, and C Today can now be enjoyed in Australia on Foxtel's OTT platform, Flash app, or in Macau Cable TV Channel 84. If you are in the Philippines, you can also watch the Converge Vision Channel 58 and Singtel Singapore Channel 15. And for our Telcom Cell users, you can also watch C Today on the Max Stream app. Don't forget to also tune in again tomorrow, same time, same channel, and be sure to also catch our morning show every day at 6 a.m. I'm Krishna Sen. I'm Ranga Estamat. And my name's Kai Surya. And as always, we'd love to say, See, see Indonesia, Indonesia, see, see the, the world, world, see, see today. Bye-bye.
Apakah kita bahagia dulu, kemudian baru menemukan sukses? Ataukah saya harus sukses dulu baru menemukan kebahagiaan? Ternyata jawabannya, kita harus bahagia dulu. Dengan membawa kerap ini sangat menarik sekali buat pribadi saya. Satu, saya bisa berkumpul dengan ibu-ibu, bisa bergaul dengan masyarakat. Kedua, saya bisa berada di tempat yang high class dengan koran, dengan membawa koran. Saya Brian Wirawan, saya adalah owner dari Craft 11 Kopi. Craft 11 Kopi ini adalah sebuah kegiatan seni yang melibatkan masyarakat, melibatkan lingkungan dengan berkarya. Sebuah contoh adalah kami membuat tas yang berbahan dasar kertas koran, kami padukan dengan baik dengan kain, baik dengan katun dan sebagainya. Inilah yang, yang sering banyak uh, banget di, uh, menjadi pertanyaan orang. Kenapa sih kok namanya Craft 11 Kopi? Kalau Craft jelas ya, kegiatan Craft, kria, kegiatan kerajinan. Tadi saya cerita tentang roadshow kami di RT-RT. Dan ini melibatkan uh, warga satu RW. Nah, eh, kebetulan nama RW-nya RW-11. RW dan kampung ini adalah kampung kebun kopi. Nah, disitulah keterlibatan semua stakeholder di RW ini. Akhirnya kami jadikan sebuah nama yaitu Craft 11 Kopi. Kebetulan di sisi lain saya adalah uh, pengusaha. Di kantor itu kadang-kadang saya diam uh, banyak karena semua segala sesuatunya sudah ada yang ngerjain akhirnya timbul sebuah keistengan yaitu kertas-kertas faktur saya uh, linting-linting saya linting-linting kemudian saya bikin uh, baik itu kapal-kapalan dan segala macam nah dari keistengan itu timbul ide bagaimana kalau ini adalah uh, jalan saya untuk itu bersatu dengan masyarakat dari, dari sisi sosialnya kemudian akhirnya saya ke, terjun ke masyarakat saya mengajarkan ke masyarakat dalam berkreasi memakai kertas awalnya dari iseng itu kemudian uh, turun ke masyarakat mengajak uh, kemudian saya berpikir sebuah produk apa sih ya yang bisa diterima dan gampang dibuat oleh masyarakat. Kemudian keidean bikin uh, tempat jarum pentul. Dari tempat jarum pentul itu kita bikin, eh uh, alhamdulillahnya ada apresiasi di masyarakat yaitu kebetulan ada masyarakat yang nikahan. Dari, nah kemudian butuh souvenir itu saya buatin lah sebanyak-banyaknya yang akhirnya menjadi souvenir di pernikahan itu dan alhamdulillah sukses dari momen itulah akhirnya kita keliling mengajarkan ke masyarakat-masyarakat tiap-tiap RT tiap-tiap RT sembari dengan tujuan adalah merekrut merekrut tenaga-tenaga yang nanti bisa menjadi uh, ahli dalam bidang menganyam One of sources waste that is the biggest contributor in our environment is paper waste, including it newspaper that used to packing food. But in Kebun Kopi Bogor, through the creativity of Brian Wiryawan, newspaper waste is no longer become something that disturbing an environmental cleanliness. He succeed to process the waste into something of high selling value. Awalnya nggak nggak ini sih gimana ya susah itu menjelaskannya. Jadi sebelum Pak Haji mengajak bikin ini kan kita belajar dulu lama tuh sempet down, sempet nggak gimana sih nggak kayak nggak tertarik gitu kan. Akhirnya Pak Haji kita belajar dulu deh rame-rame Pak Haji Brian. Akhirnya yaudah sekarang kita uh, bikin ini dulu. Kalau kita sukses 
kita akan pameran kata Pak Haji kan Pak Haji Brian tapi Alhamdulillah Pak Hajinya juga lancar kitanya juga lancar karena saya mendapat penghasilan saya bisa uh, mendapatkan rezeki dari sini saya bisa untuk nambah-nambah ini anak sekolah juga bisa buat e, belanja juga gitu. Kalau saya emang e, bagian tim linting aja. Saya nggak bagian nganyam karena e, tim linting itu ya khusus linting, nggak nggak untuk nganyam gitu. Tadinya Pak Haji Brian juga pengen mengajarkan, cuman karena saya banyak kegiatan juga di rumah, jadi nggak sempat untuk kalau ngelinting itu lebih rumit gitu. Jadi saya milih tim ini aja gitu. Awalnya nggak bisa, awalnya saya emang benar-benar nggak bisa. Saya belajar sama Pak Haji Brian sampai bisa, sampai e, menghasilkan. Belajarnya pokoknya rumit deh awalnya. Kita, kita sebagai e, makhluk e, sosial, kita harus bisa berpikir bagaimana diri kita menjadi manfaat. Baik itu buat diri kita, buat lingkungan, dan buat siapapun. Nah, dari sisi itu saya berpikir, bagaimana ya kalau saya mengajak warga. Tentu pertama kali yang langkahnya adalah saya datang dulu ke RT, saya minta izin. Kemudian dari RT-nya memanggil warganya ke di, di sebuah tempat yang kemudian... Uh, untuk bisa kita belajar bareng. Nah, kemudian setelah kurun waktu berjalan, akhirnya mereka menjadi orang-orang yang terampil. Nah, disinilah sisi marketing harus bisa berjalan. Cari orderan kemana-mana, terus kita membuat, kita tawarkan ke, ke, ke banyak tempat. Alhamdulillah dari sisi ini bisa berjalan. Estimated has a positive benefit makes Brian invites people and community around his neighborhood to participate. They are empowered to being productive. There's a new Muris woman have joined in craft sebuah kopi. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. We are from The Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di Teman Bicara Mama. Good morning Indonesia, Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well.
Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. Day business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. These are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible thing. I save up my energy to buy this bag. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. Morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya.
how is she? Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam. Makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team, saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di teman bicara Mama. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. During running the business, frequently Brian and the team face a challenge that obstructs either the production process or sales. The most important obligation is to choose the best quality of materials for the surplus copies product. Yang menju menjual itu waktu itu uh, kita pameran di Pemda. Pameran pertama kali di Pemda itu barang yang kita jual itu eh, tempat tisu pertama kali kan pertama banget itu tempat tisu yang kita jual itu pertama kali pameran di Pemda dan antusias orang-orang tersebut eh, eh, sangat berantusias karena itu dari koran dari koran dan barang saat itu bukan hanya tempat tisu yang kita buat eh, ada juga perahu pas bunga gitu kemudian wadah-wadah kecil itu banyak Da, dari situ permintaan permintaan untuk produk-produk koran ini banyak sekali hingga kita harus memilih satu produk yang punya khas kita yaitu tas etnik. 
uh, untuk memasarkan Krab 11 Kopi ini karena dia berbahan dasar koran. Jadi kita uh, mengenalkan dulu bahan dasarnya itu terbuat dari koran. Kemudian uh, memperkenalkan juga ketahanannya. Karena uh, kalau uh, kita lihat berbahan dasar koran itu kan identik dengan... Oh, nanti kita linting. Kita linting. Uh, li di linting ini kita mengibaratkan sebuah lidi atau sebuah rotan. Nah, dari, dari, nah, maka akan ada satu tim namanya tim melinting. Tugasnya adalah melinting aja. Gitu, melinting aja. Nah, dari setelah terjadi lintingan, mereka bawa kemari. Nanti eh, ada orang-orang yang memang terampil dalam menganyamnya. Nah, akhirnya jadi tim menganyam. Nah, tugas mereka adalah nganyam aja, nyam aja. Mereka lintingan dari tim linting, nganyam ya sampai dengan jadi. Kemudian setelah jadi anyaman, e, masih anyaman mentah, gitu. Nah, mereka bawa kemari. Setelah itu barulah masuk ke dalam tim finishing. Sampai dengan nanti selesai, barulah kita ke tim marketing. Uh, semua itu sengaja saya pilah-pilah, uh, saya potong-potong gitu, agar masing-masing uh, terampil di bidangnya. Yang linting, nah, terampil di bidang linting, nganyam, uh, terampil di bidang nganyam, begitu-begitu juga bidang yang lain seperti itu. On the hand of right people, craft 11 kopi keep surviving nowadays. Together and warm are the things that they hold on every production process they did. Saya awal ikut ini, saya bisa mendaftarkan anak saya sekolah SMP sampai sekarang. Saya dapat bantuannya, dapat rezeki dari sinilah. Itu saya belum 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 lulus sih, masih masih sekolah, tapi emang sama saya sekolahin Mondok jadi kan uh, masih tiga tahun ke depan. Sekarang baru kelas 3. Kalau itu memang kita setiap ada perubahan dan model baru selalu belajar. Kalau itu sih nggak lama, ya paling beberapa kali dikasih interview sama Pak Haji, terus kita belajar gitu, kita kita kerjakan gitu. Awalnya memang belum bisa apa-apa, karena kita belajar waktu itu berkegiatan di PKK, akhirnya bisa gitu. Ya sebenarnya yang paling berat adalah masalah bagaimana memberdayakan masyarakat. Bagaimana membuka alam pikirnya masyarakat itu. Terutama yang karena saya lebih banyak berhubungan dengan ibu-ibu di lingkungan saya. Bagaimana meningkatkan intelektual mereka. Bagaimana meningkatkan kemampuan mereka. Itu adalah tantangan yang paling terbesar. Contoh begini, saya pernah bikin... Lampu tidur, lampu tidur itu terdiri dari tiga bagian atas, tengah, bawah. Nah, saya saya uji coba kan ke tiga orang. Si A bikin bawah, si B bikin tengah, si C bikin atas. Sudah dibalik. Si A bikin atas, si B bikin si B bikin bawah, si A bikin tengah. Begitu tuh. Sampai mereka tiga tiganya bisa bikin. Bawah, tengah, atas. Nah, begitu sudah, saya saya kembalikan ke mereka. Bu, kalau gitu, ibu sudah bisa bu, bikin semua. Tolong ya, bikin satu rangkaian. Atas, tengah, bawah. Jawaban mereka adalah, saya nggak bisa, Pak. <laughs> padahal, padahal kalau di, di e, bikin satu persatu bagiannya, gitu, bawah, tengah, atas, kalau dibikin satu persatu bisa. Tapi kalau digabungin, nggak bisa. Nah, ini menandakan, oh ternyata masyarakat seperti itu. Masyarakat harus betul-betul di, digiring, di, diayomi, dirangkul, sampai mereka menimbulkan sebuah keyakinan bahwa mereka bisa. Nah, tugas saya adalah meyakinkan bahwa sebenarnya mereka bisa. Nah, rasa kepercayaan diri mereka yang akhirnya menyebabkan itu dia. Nah, ini, 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 ini tugas saya adalah meningkatkan, meninggikan rasa percaya diri dari uh, masyarakat itu tadi. 
Every business has its lowest phase, but it is considered as something that will definitely happen in running a business. Improving the intellectual and ability of women around is a challenge that Brian must be thinking about it. Penampilan dia nggak sebaik itu, nggak sebagus itu, nggak seganteng itu. Tapi itu hatinya dia sebaik itu dan tidak ada orang yang pernah gue temuin hatinya sebaik Mas. Pemain! Good morning Indonesia, Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on See Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on See Indonesia. Only on See Indonesia. We are from The Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di Teman Bicara Mama. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Dia tuh sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya.
spicy. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Come see the nature only on See Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on See Indonesia. Only on See Indonesia. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City, City Day, Day Business. business. Oh, these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. I save up my energy to buy this bag. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Bahkan brosurnya aja, Pak. Saya udah pelan-pelanin jalan. Ditegur, Mas, cepetan. Gitu. Ini bisa baca perilaku kamu. Selain itu mau baca tarot nggak? Iya. Oh iya, Sam. Sama kan tangan kamu. Keren banget. Mau, no, Om. Halo. During his career, Brian with his wife Novi Hermawati very grateful of what they had. Pros and cons is something natural. Many obstacles is not something that have to be feared. Ya kalau gini ya, kalau pro dan kontra itu sudah sesuatu yang alami. Enggak dan prinsip sedasar saya adalah uh, tidak akan mungkin kita maju kalau tidak ada halangan. Kalau bicara halangan, oh halangan banyak banget. Iya, wah dari A sampai Z. Tapi akhirnya menurut saya halangan itu bukan sesuatu yang harus saya takuti. Bahkan 
uh, halangan atau rintangan atau masalah itu adalah sesuatu yang nantinya akan membesarkan saya tatkala saya hadapi dengan baik tatkala ha, masalah itu saya hadapi dengan bijak ya alhamdulillah malah makin baik Novi Irmawati is the spare head of Craft Sebelas Kopi. Becoming a wife and marketing team, many challenge have to be faced. Ada tantangan yang menarik. Di bilangnya apa? Ini barang sampah gitu. Itu tantangan yang menarik, tapi nggak apa-apa. Dan kita buktikan eh, koran bekas tetap bisa naik kelas. Jadi koran bekas dibuat hal yang tidak mungkin menjadi mungkin. Biasanya koran bekas itu dibungkus untuk bungkus cabai, untuk bungkus gorengan. Tapi sekarang koran bekas itu dikemas e, untuk e, di, dan dipakai untuk e, berbagai macam acara. Dikemas sehingga menjadi produk-produk e, yang sangat menarik. Brian Wiryawan opinions that the MSME's industry in Indonesia is currently growing with the government support. Furthermore, he said the success of business not only rely on the government, yet it depends on us. Uh, kalau sisi UMKM, saya pikir memang di, di khususnya di Kabupaten Bogor ini apresiasi pemerintah luar biasa ya. Di setiap kecamatan ada forum UK, uh, UKM, uh, baik itu forum UKM kecamatan, kabupaten, dan uh, saya melihat apresiasi dari pemerintah kabupaten, khususnya di Bogor ini, udah sangat baik. Ya. Di setiap dinasnya merekrut, uh, ini. nah akan tetapi uh, pemikiran dari UKM itu sendiri tidak bisa dia maju karena dibantu oleh pemerintah nggak bisa. Saya merasa bahwa kalau kita memang maju kita nggak per, nggak, nggak bisa mengandalkan seseorang atau satu badan nggak. Tetapi tetap kalau kita mau maju tetaplah kita yang harus berjuang. Itu yang saya lakukan. E, saya lebih fokus pada bagaimana produk saya bisa diterima oleh masyarakat. Itu yang yang jadi intens dalam berpikir dan, dan dalam berkarya karena. Uh, ujungnya nanti adalah produk produk yang la diterima laku di masyarakat uh, masalah kegiatannya menurut saya itu akan mengikuti nah ini yang yang, yang konsen saya hanya yaitu bagaimana membuat produk yang bisa diterima oleh masyarakat luas dan itu terus yang yang saat ini sedang jadi proyek uh, yang kita lakukan kita lakukan terus menerus seperti itu Insya Allah sih kalau memang memang i, Pak Haji membutuhkan saya bisa bisa apa ya bisa minian lintingan misalkan nih kita butuh Pak Haji dapat pesian sekian ratus tas terus membutuhkan lintingan sekian ribu saya harus siap gitu saya harus mensupport Pak Pak Haji Brian gitu itu aja sih nggak mas nggak ada yang ini sih selalu selalu siap gitu Pak Haji membutuhkan lintingan ya kita harus siap gitu. uh, saya mau berterima kasih kepada Pak Haji Brian karena saya udah bisa mendapatkan rezeki dari sini saya bisa nyekolahin anak saya bisa mendapatkan ilmu saya bisa menambah rezeki buat keluarga saya itu aja Terima kasih banyak Pak Haji Brian. Jadi gini, eh, awalnya dulu kan tidak ada, saya tidak tidak punya kegiatan kerap kerap ini gitu. Tapi dengan membawa kerap ini sangat menarik sekali buat pribadi saya. Satu, eh, saya bisa berkumpul dengan ibu-ibu, bisa, bisa bergaul dengan masyarakat. Kemudian saya bisa mm, menjual, artinya saya bisa memasarkan produk yang unik ini. Kedua, saya bisa berada di tempat yang high class dengan koran, dengan membawa koran. Gitu, saya bisa uh, keliling Indonesia sih belum, tapi bisa uh, pergi ke berbagai daerah dengan membawa kerap 11 kopi. Dan uh, kalau di Pemda itu dengan membawa kerap 11 kopi 
orang udah kenal ini produknya siapa gitu. Jadi senang dengan membawa Krab 11 Kopi. Kalau motivasi saya, ya namanya berbuat itu pasti ada sisi enak atau tidak enak. Pro dan kontra itu pasti ada. E, tantangan itu pasti ada. Kendala pasti ada. Yang yang support pun pasti ada. Maka baga, e, menurut saya dan yang saya lakukan selama ini adalah bagaimana kita hidup ini bahagia tanpa syarat. Kita melakukan apa aja, kita hanya untuk kita bahagia, nggak memakai syarat apapun. Kita berbuat ya karena kita bahagia. Ada sebuah uh, wacana begini, apakah kita bahagia dulu, kemudian baru menemukan sukses, ataukah saya harus sukses dulu baru menemukan kebahagiaan? Ternyata jawabannya, kita harus bahagia dulu, baru pasti sukses. Nah, dalam kondisi apapun, ya kita harus bahagia. Saat kita susah ya kita harus bahagia, saat kita senang pun ya kita tetap harus bahagia, saat kita punya bahagia, saat kaya bahagia, saat miskin bahagia, bahagia tanpa syarat. Menurut saya langkah-langkah seperti ini yang bagaimana membuat kita bahagia ya pasti ya sukses. Itu. Pakis tuh untuk aku tuh kayak temen ya kalau aku ngeliatnya gitu karena dia juga yang selalu ngebangkitin semangat aku gitu setiap kalau lagi kerja stres gitu dan ngeliat dia sehat itu bahagia banget jadi aku ngeliatnya bukan sebagai objek lagi tapi sebagai salah satu ekosistem yang jalan di dunia ini gitu loh yang bikin kehidupan kita berjalan Aku Wina dan selamat datang di hutan pakis kecilku Pertama kali suka pakis tuh gara-gara dulu aku suka main game. Nah main game itu kayak main game RPG gitu, jadi selalu ada scene hutannya. Uh, Final Fantasy 10 apalagi yang Tidus yang pas lagi sama Yuna tuh terbang-terbang, itu kan di Magical Forest. Itu kayak wah keren banget. Nah, salah satunya yang ngingetin sama si hutan-hutannya itu tuh si pakis-pakis ini gitu. Nah sampai akhirnya pas lagi kerja nih, terus kayak kayaknya butuh hobi lain nih buat biar nggak kepikiran kerja terus kan. Nah, ya udah deh, coba main tanaman deh. Sempat sih coba jenis spesies di Shidia, tapi abis itu kok yang attach yang pakis ya. Nah, akhirnya dari situ mulai kumpulin satu, dua, tiga, kayaknya lama-lama gini, kayaknya harus dipunya deh semuanya gitu kan. Nah, dari situ akhirnya nggak cuma koleksi, di situ akhirnya mulai kayak... Uh, Kayak hiking atau apa. Nah dari hiking itu, aku juga baru sadar kalau banyak banget ternyata di Indonesia gitu. Kayaknya mesti fokusnya sama pakis. Akhirnya aku udah nggak 
nggak beli tanaman yang spesies lain akhirnya aku cuma dedikasiin ke pakis dan kebetulan di Indonesia nggak banyak peminatnya jadi kayak hmm, bisa nih dieksplor nih terus <laughs> akhirnya ya udah deh mulai dari situ pokoknya yang aku lihat di toko aku beli aku coba gitu jadi yang bikin aku senang banget tuh sebetulnya fiddleheadnya gitu karena fiddlehead itu kayak ada rasa bikin nyandu soalnya setiap keluar tuh yang kayak aduh kayak apa nih ya daunnya itu kayak pasti uh, sempurna kan ya dia terbuka dengan lebar kan ya jadi setiap aku ngeliat ada fiddlehead nih kayak di sini nih tuh pasti happy bawaannya itu kayaknya yang bikin aku suka sama pakis. Startnya aku tuh dari 2018, cuma 2018 tuh belum segencar sekarang gitu. Masih yang kayak, hmm lucu ya, boleh satu ya gitu. Mungkin dua bulan lagi baru boleh satu ya gitu. Tapi kalau sekarang kan udah kayak semuanya di, di oke okay, boleh gitu. Kalau 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 dulu masih pelan pelan 2018. Pakis yang paling aku suka itu sebetulnya dari genus Maratia. Kenapa aku suka? Soalnya mereka bentuknya nggak kayak pakis pertama, kayak pohon. Padahal pakis terus mereka punya batang yang cenderung tuh uh, tebel gitu. Dan daunnya tuh tebel-tebel uh, semua, mengkilat gitu. Jadi gak tau kenapa ya, nge setiap ngeliat tuh ya ampun nih kayak daun jambu atau apa gitu. Tapi sebetulnya pakis, jadinya tuh gemas. Dan kebetulan mereka salah satu pakis yang purba. Jadi bukan yang modern, jadi ngeliatnya juga masih ada bonggolnya kayak gitu. Cantik banget. Pakis yang paling remarkable itu buat aku Tektaria hilocarpa. Jadi aku waktu itu pertama kali nemu itu ada di satu toko. Jadi yang punya itu kebetulan udah uh, wafat. Nah jadi yang jaga adalah orang kepercayaannya. Dan dia cuma punya dua waktu itu di situ. Dan uh, dia pengen ada yang megang tuh orang yang bisa ngerawat pakis gitu. Wah, ini apa ya? Warnanya luar biasa gitu karena dia warnanya corak campur corak putih gitu terus saat itu aku punya dan aku cari dia itu adanya di memang di data adanya di Sulawesi tapi aku belum pernah ke Sulawesi gitu kan dan ada lagi di Philippines uh, semenjak itu aku nggak pernah lihat dia lagi dan sekalinya aku punya itu makanya langsung aku sebar sporanya gitu dan, tapi itu sampai sekarang menjadi paling kesayangan karena susah sekali nyarinya Sebetulnya spesies yang maintenance-nya paling luar biasa tuh banyak, karena tergantung kita ngambilnya. Kalau misalnya kita ngambil spesies yang asli dataran tinggi, sedangkan aku tinggal di Bintaro Tangsel yang luar biasa panas ini, tentu pasti maintenance-nya susah. Tapi kalau misalnya aku ngambil spesies tinggi, aku tinggal di Cibodas, nggak akan susah kayak sekarang. Spesies yang masih pengen dicari tuh, yang pertama itu Teratophyllum, karena dia mungkin sebetulnya ada ya, dia ada di Indonesia dan dia tuh sangat uh, miniatur banget gitu, jadi dan kebetulan waktu aku lihat dia di dataran rendah jadi aku pengen banget bisa dapetin dia dan bisa ngebudidaya gitu. Itu pertama Teratophyllum, kedua itu Aglomorpha acuminata. Waktu itu sempat ketemu juga cuma uh, kebetulan ya nggak dijual gitu kan. Jadi aku sampai sekarang semoga bisa mendapatkan Aglomorpha acuminata yang rizomanya bagus banget itu warnanya kayak uh, mint ice creamnya. Cold stone. Kayak sekarang nih aku lagi tertarik banget sama bolbitis gitu. Padahal kemarin-kemarin tuh selalu ngelewatin bolbitis, tapi biasanya itu yang memicu itu tuh setelah aku tahu, oh ternyata di Indonesia spesies bolbitis tuh ada nggak uh, tahu ya berapa, cuma kira-kira kayak wah ada 10 loh ternyata gitu. Yang di luar negeri tuh nggak sebanyak itu, terus tiba-tiba jadi yang kayak hmm ini adalah misiku selanjutnya mengumpulkan bolbitis dan bagaimana bisa budidaya itu gitu udah browsing lihat buku gitu terus kebetulan pernah lihat di hiking jadi kalau aku nggak pernah lihat nggak segitu menggebu-gebunya gitu tapi kalau aku jadi aku hiking kan selalu aku fotoin tuh tapi nanti kalau lagi browsing browsing wait kayaknya pernah lihat deh pakis yang ini gitu terus tiba-tiba ya gitu deh motivasi dan api-api ke semangat untuk mencari spesies itu gitu jadi rasa pas udah dapet itu, itu sudah nggak seperti dulu. Sekarang itu justru rasa ketemu mereka di alam itu jauh lebih menyenangkan daripada aku punya. Karena yang dulunya itu hobinya mengkoleksi gitu, sekarang itu 
aku lebih pengen ngelihat mereka di alam. Karena saat kita lihat di alam, aku bisa lihat, oh ternyata kamu sukanya tuh hidup di uh, environment yang kayak gini ya. Oh ternyata di Indonesia masih ada ya di alam gitu. Justru justru sekarang kalau dapet itu lebih kaya, bisa nggak dibudidaya di dataran rendah gitu. Tapi kalau rasa yang lebih wah gitu, itu saat aku lihat di alam. Contohnya aku pernah Taman Nasional Gunung Loser, di situ aku lagi hiking, ternyata aku nemuin kristensennya di alam. Itu luar biasa, mules-mules pas ngeliat gitu kan, yang kayak tidak gitu, bisa dua jam cuma untuk foto India doang. Itu, tapi kalau untuk dapetin nggak se-hype itu sekarang gitu. Karena yang kita cintai tidak harus kita miliki kan ya. Hal tergila yang pernah aku lakukan untuk pakis-pakis ini kayaknya yang recently aku lakukan adalah aku keliling Sumatera 45 hari untuk khusus untuk net pakis. Dan aku keliling pun ya jatuh dari motor, kakinya retak ya, terus segala apa kena banjir, bencana alam, semua bencana alam kita cobain untuk ngelihat pagi saja tuh kita sampai hiking yang seharian terus dan itu full lumpur dan itu di areanya harimau baru duduk ular turun gitu itu cuma buat lihat pakis gitu jadi kurasa kayaknya hal tergila ya itu muterin satu pulau Indonesia untuk lihat pakisnya aja Good morning Indonesia, Southeast Asia and the world. Rise and shine everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Oh, these are all my uh, collect, uh, collectible, uh, collectible things. I save up my energy to buy this bag. President Joko Widodo earlier today welcomed Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan. Agreement akan dibentuk untuk meningkatkan perdagangan dan peluncuran negosiasinya dimulai tahun ini. Tanggapan keluarga mereka fine fine aja. Sebetulnya lebih lebih kepada mereka tahu aku yang ini anak maunya maunya gitu loh. Maksudnya waktu pertama aku mutusin udah nggak mau kerja lagi dan mau fokus di pakis itu pun cukup wow buat mereka cuma akhirnya yang ngelihat segitu ambisiusnya gitu ya dan mereka happy, -happy aja gitu karena aku staynya di apartemen jadi nggak punya lahan akhirnya di uh, rumah ibuku tuh terus depannya aku pakaiin buat pakis semua memang komplain akan selalu datang karena mereka susah jalannya tapi akhirnya kan aku sudah tidak di rumah jadi mereka tidak ada masalah kamu biarkan pakisku menjadi main karakter. Pakis jadi bisnis memang awalnya kan aku koleksi. Karena koleksi semakin banyak kan nggak mungkin kalau cuma numpuk koleksi aja kan. Biar koleksinya berkembang pun kita harus smart gitu. Jadi gimana supaya muter. Dan akhirnya dari pakis-pakis yang ada aku jadi mother plan. Either itu kita propagasi, kita sebar sporanya atau kita cutting ya. Jadi uh, ini ada beberapa yang hasil cutting gitu dan dari itu pun akhirnya aku jual karena di Indonesia setelah aku lihat tidak hampir belum ada penjual yang khusus ngejual pakis dengan kondisi yang baik gitu. Jadi kenapa nggak aku start aja? Dari situ pun akhirnya dia juga bisa biayain beberapa uh, perjalanan kita gitu untuk melihat pakis atau biasanya kalau aku lagi beli di petani mana terus aku beli banyak kan juga bisa aku resell lagi. Biasanya dari situ. Nah ini tempat aku naruh spora yang udah aku sebar. Kiertomium falcatum nih, bahkan udah dari 2021 nih. Uh, ini dia udah anak-anaknya, biasanya nanti kayak gini aku pindah ke seedling pot kayak gini. Yang aku suka banget nih, Tektaria hilocarpa. Ini udah dari Mei 2021 aku sebar. 
Dan setelah itu akhirnya tuh dia tumbuh. Hi, happy banget. Udah banyak spesies-spesies yang Indonesia itu udah aku kembangin. Contohnya ini juga aku suka banget sama dia yang tadi tuh Acrostichum aureum. Dia yang jenis di pantai. Dia paling gampang disebar. Jadi yang aku taruh di sini tuh yang uh, terekspos cahaya cukup tinggi. Tetap non direct makanya aku pakai paranet. Nah, salah satunya itu jenis Davalia. Nah, di sini ada macam-macam Davalia nih. Davalia itu kan epifit ya. Epifit itu jadi mereka biasa ada di bagian uh, di atas pohon. Jadi mereka terekspos matahari. Nah, orang kan taunya pakai tuh digelapin padahal mereka senang banget sama matahari. Mereka nih rizomanya biasanya mereka tuh e, kayak megang di pohon. Nah ini tuh kalau jenis davalia ini ada baiknya ditaruh di e, yang terekspos mataharinya cukup tinggi meskipun masih non direct. Kalau ini nih bibit-bibit Acrostichum aureum, Acrostichum aureum itu biasanya hidupnya di pesisir pantai. Dia tuh ngebantu mangrove untuk e, mecah. Uh, ombak. Nah, dia tuh terekspos sama sinar matahari yang tinggi banget. Ini hasil bibitan dari spora. Dan mereka baru aku keluarin dari tray pembibitan dan mulai aku eksposin ke cahaya. Jadi lihat, ininya kan masih kayak kriwil gitu, tapi akhirnya daun yang baru udah mulai adaptasi ke sinar matahari. Jadi pertama mula ketemu sama Wina itu di Instagram. Rupanya sama-sama suka tanaman gitu kan. Spesifik larinya sekarang ke Pakis. Waktu awal sih kayak, ah ini orang tahu seberapa jauh sih gitu. Gak banyak yang tahu tanaman gitu. Ini rupanya serius banget. Banyak yang lebih tahu dia daripada saya gitu. Oh ini, ini jenis Pakis juga, ini jenis Pakis juga gitu. Sampai akhirnya sekarang tuh kayak... Banyakan saya yang salah. Dia koleksi bukunya, terus koleksi tanamannya. Nah, di situ saya baru ngeliat nih orang yang apa ya, gila, gila sama satu hobi ya kayak gini nih. Orangnya gigi banget sih. Harus dapet apapun yang terjadi gitu. Terus uh, main ke rumahnya dan yang udah kayak hutan waktu itu gitu dia dari motor touring salah satunya itu senang hiking begitu pas berapa kali ngobrol Wina tuh mau ikut gitu setelah ngikut itu nah berlanjut lah sampai sekarang ini oh ya Kenapa akhirnya aku bisa bikin kayak video-video yang kayak semi dokumenter ini? Soalnya sebetulnya saat kita suka sama sesuatu kita pengen share. Gimana caranya bisa ngasih lihat apa yang aku lihat ke orang banyak menggunakan audiovisual gitu. Salah satunya caranya aku harus bikin uh, video seperti itu dengan musik yang pas. Karena itu perasaan aku saat aku ngeliat pakis ya gitu. Jadi disitulah akhirnya pertama aku bikin terus ternyata respon orang bagus gitu. Orang jadi yang kayak, wah ternyata bagus ya ini tanaman apa gitu. Akhirnya dari situ aku mulai bikin lagi uh, video kedua, ketiga gitu. Yang uh, biar orang tuh makin aware, khususnya orang Indonesia gitu. Kalau ternyata spesies-spesies cantik ini tuh ada di kita loh gitu. Itu, itu pertamanya kenapa bikin. dan supaya bisa menjual tanaman ini dengan um, perasaan. Percaya apa nggak percaya? Waktu kita menyentuh tanaman, itu kadang kalau kita baru galau, baru emosi, kita begitu nyentuh dia itu jadi adem. <laughs> apa taman itu belum serimbun ini, jadi cuman ada pohon beringin yang bonsai itu ada cuman ada dua. Jadi dari situ si suami bilang kok nggak enak ya nggak adem ya akhirnya saya beli anturium dan setelah saya kasih anturium tapi kebetulan suami bilang 
kok ini daun cuman warnanya hijau aja mbok ya cari itu yang merah kuning akhirnya saya menemukan aglonema jadi suka aglonema karena antar varian itu beda corak gitu loh mbak jadi semuanya punya kekhasan tersendiri walaupun yang hijau yang merah ada yang semi pink pink gitu jadi nggak ada patternnya nggak ada yang sama ya setiap pagi saya rutinitas uh, menghilangkan apalagi di Jakarta mbak walaupun badan capek tapi kita begitu nyentuh aglonema entah itu reporting entah itu cuman ngeliatin udah merupakan sesuatu yang uh, pokoknya nggak bisa di ungkapkan dengan kata-kata gitu mbak. Aglonema pertama itu suksom mbak. Suksom itu dengan warnanya dominan merah dan apa ya seger ngelihatnya itu cakep aja sih. Paling favorit itu hmm, saya susah jawabnya mbak. Tapi ada yang saya suka karena dia karakternya namanya Rijani. Karena karakter daunnya, warnanya, dan istilahnya perawatannya itu gampang. Ini bentuk daunnya dan warnanya itu dia uh, agak gold, ada pinknya seperti ini. Ini kebetulan saya rendem pakai uh, air karena ini prospek potong. Jadi prospek potong karena apa? Saya mau memperbanyak si aglonema ini. Ada satu tanaman yang paling remark remarkable namanya Wulandari. Karena saya suka karakternya, begitu suka saya beli hampir 20 biji, Mbak. Tapi yang tumbang hampir separuh. Karena apa? Karena aglonema itu kebanyakan datang dari Thailand, kalau nggak Thailand, Cina. Dan karena mereka itu impor, jadi Perawatan sampai di Indonesia itu harus melalui uh, waktu, Mbak. Jadi kadang ada seller yang langsung begitu datang dari impor, cuman dirawat seminggu langsung dijual. Ada seller yang benar-benar dia ngerawat sebulan baru dijual. Nah itu mungkin saya baru berapa minggu saya beli. Jadi dia belum stabil sama iklim di Indonesia, jadi lonyot. Perjuangan untuk uh, belajar cari di Youtube gimana sih tanaman impor tuh caranya merawat tuh seperti apa. Ternyata udah dapet, uh, intinya nggak boleh kena hujan. Tampias pun nggak boleh, nah itu kuncinya. Nggak boleh sama sekali kena hujan, terus harus selama sebulan apa dua bulan itu kita merawatnya harus intens. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Indonesia. Come see the nature only on see Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on see Indonesia. Only on see Indonesia. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself, along with my colleagues, will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well, and your latest viral news as well. Hello everyone, we are from The Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team, 
saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di Teman Bicara Mama. Setiap tahun itu pasti bermunculan varian-varian baru dengan pattern-pattern yang baru. Jadi se sebagai pecinta aglo itu uh, kayaknya kok bagus ya, kayaknya gimana ya cara dapetinnya. Tapi biasanya kalau kayak seedling, seedling itu dia dari benih mbak. Jadi uh, mungkin cuman ada satu varian, dua, dua tanaman, apa tiga tanaman, paling banyak sepuluh tanaman. Uh, yang masih kepengen dicari itu rinjani ori mbak jadi karena rinjani ori itu saya suka patternnya dan belum banyak yang punya juga jadi waktu itu uh, saya beli tanaman yang harganya kalau menurut orang yang nggak suka tanaman itu agak tidak masuk akal gitu dan Pak ini nggak tahu kalau saya belanja aglo tersebut ya kan sebetulnya bukan aglo sih mbak uh, ini monstera itu kebukanya karena kakak saya bilang Anda beli sekian juta loh Hah? emang harga jauh sekian juta iya wah gila emang kamu ya <laughs> merasa bersalah saya itu beli itu terus terang karena masih ada rasa kepingin ya kayak Kayak anak kecil lah mbak, baru suka-sukanya tanaman, ya kan, baru kepingin mendapatkan. Tahu-tahu ada yang nawarin tuh, ah, ada duit nih di rekening, ya kan. Tapi nanti kalau bilang sama Pak Nih, nanti Pak Nih marah nih, ya kan. Akhirnya belilah saya itu mbak. Saya kan kebetulan anak tunggal, kakak ipar saya itu pada suka tanaman semua. Kalau kalau di Jogja itu rumahnya ya seperti ini uh, suasananya tapi kalau anak-anak nah itu kadang ada kecemburuannya apalagi yang bontot yang bontot itu bilang bunda tuh ngapain sih tiap pagi yang ditengokin tanaman yang dielus-elus tanaman I itu dulu tapi sekarang karena mereka sudah tahu bundanya itu yang dulu notabene suka marah-marah suka ngomel-ngomel ya sekarang masih sih mbak <laughs> itu sekarang kalau udah ketemu dengan tanaman udah ngomel-ngomelnya berkurang mbak <laughs> malah sekarang uh, kadang yang bontot itu bunda uh, mau dieditin reelsnya apa mau disutingin dia malah menawarkan kayak gitu jadi alhamdulillah anak-anak udah pahamlah kalau kesibukan ibunya itu bisa bikin ibunya itu lebih bahagia walaupun sudah bahagia <laughs> Jadi kalau perawatan itu penyiraman seminggu dua kali, terus kita kasih pupuk habis siram kocor, kita kasih pupuk entah itu or, pupuk organik, POC, entah itu atonik apa B1 itu bebas. Dan kadang saya semprot pakai pupuk daun. Sebetulnya aglonema itu suka sama matahari mbak, tapi Bukan yang direct, siang pun nggak masalah, tapi yang penting atas ada seperti entah itu paranet apa uh, polikarbonat. Aglonema itu nggak, nggak sulit, sebetulnya dia suka matahari. Terus sirkulasi udara itu harus bagus, Kak. Sama perawatan hama, entah itu pestisida, fungisida, bakterisida itu harus rutin. Itu aja, sama media tanam harus poros, udah <laughs> sesimpel itu. Kalau ditanya berapa pot, kayaknya nggak bisa ngitung deh. Mungkin lebih dari 200 deh mbak. Karena yang yang kecil-kecil sampai yang gede itu ya sekitar, nggak tahu deh mbak, mungkin ya antara 300-400 deh. Ini rutinitas Bok Kebun kalau habis belanja tanaman. Ya oh, Nama Bok Kebun belanjaan. itu terlahir karena... Kebetulan kan di rumah itu banyak kadang ngumpul anak-anak, ponakan-ponakan banyak, pada ngeriung. Eh, ini channelnya namanya apa? Ada yang nyeletuk A, nyeletuk B, nyeletuk A. Akhirnya namanya Mbok Kebun. Mbok Kebun itu ya, Mbok itu kan Mbok ya, simbok ibu. 
kebun itu kebun jadi ibu kebun sebetulnya tapi lebih ke Jawa sih mbak jadi saya bikin YouTube itu cuman iseng mbak cuman iseng sama Pak Ne gini uh, dia bilang gini yuk kita bikin YouTube yuk iseng iseng Emang ada yang nonton? Ayo kita bikin aja yang penting konsisten. Dia bilang gitu. Ayo, akhirnya kita bikin kan Mbak. Dan seputar aglonema. Dari situ banyak yang mempraktekannya juga. Dan dari situ kadang cuplik-cupliannya saya masukin ke Reels Instagram. Dari Instagram itu mereka lari ke Youtube. Nah dari situ berkembang, berkembang, berkembang. Akhirnya banyak temen. Dari situ Alhamdulillah. Uh, yang ibu-ibu dulu se seperti saya nggak pernah tahu seperti apa sih aglonema kok beli mati beli mati beli mati akhirnya alhamdulillah pada bisa walaupun saya juga otodidak saya punya guru juga ya kan mbak mungkin uh, karena penyampaian saya sama Pak Ne itu nyantai <laughs> uh, dari situ kita DM kita WA terus tanya tanya dan alhamdulillah apa ya mbak ya kepuas kepuasan tersendiri sih mbak bisa bisa sharing seperti itu apa oh, ayo ngerti ra ini namanya dulu sukanya kan beli tanaman yang ijo ijo kayak apa jenis anturium atau apapun tapi begitu covid nggak ada kerjaan nggak pergi kemana mana nggak boleh ngapa ngapain sampai akhirnya rumah kayak hutan saya lihat memang orangnya konsisten mbak jadi dia kalau sudah seneng sesuatu istilah jawanya sembuh tuh jadi memang benar-benar mau berbuat untuk sesuatu. Tapi juga kadang rada bikin sedih juga sebab saya selalu bangun tidur sekarang sendiri terus. Loh, istri saya di mana hilang. Ternyata yang dilus-lus ke ini tanamannya. Nah ya, tapi alhamdulillah karena dia menyalurkan hobinya, tensi uring-uringannya hampir hilang. Tersalurkan ke sana. Jadi saya mendukung banget itu. Are you ready? Okay, Zihao, with Hakim, let's do this bit. But let's start by removing the pillowcases first. Is it too long on the other side, Zihao? So, Zihao, what should we do next? Zihao? All right. Straight, neat. Zihao, are we done with this? Let's do this, gentlemen. Let's pretend all of you are room attendants. So you come into the room, right? You remove the duvet from the bed. Now, as you remove, you want to make sure Now, before we make the bed, you notice that it's too close to the wall. So a lot of room attendants they want to push the bed out. Quite easy because they're on wheels. So now you have enough space here, easy for you to work. Now, can you just hand me the bed sheet, please? Let's pretend this is a new piece, okay? There's a right side to the bed sheet and there's a wrong side. You look at this. So this is the seam, right? This is behind. This is below. Yes, you're right. This is below. Ah. This is the front. Very good. Usually, you will stand at the, the foot of the bed, open this up, just make sure it's on the right side. But there's a lot of tweaking of the job scope to suit them because otherwise they find it very difficult. So um, 
it's it's the the hotel trying to conform to them rather than the other way around and of course the the workspace must be conducive to these uh, people with with needs special needs hakim do you know how to put it in come very good I think training for people with special needs is not like normal students whereby they know what you're looking at. You have to tailor to their way of learning. Yeah, for example, like students with autism, they are very standard. That means, you know, if you tell them 9 o'clock start, 3 o'clock finish, you must make sure that 3 o'clock you finish. So you must know what traits each of them have. So we need to craft a particular job to fit them. For example, let's say as a room attendant, some of them are very good at only doing certain steps. So then we have to craft it out. Excellent. Good, Hakim. Okay, so we're done with the pillow and the pillowcase. Not everyone can work in a cafe. Not everyone can sew. Not everyone can bake. So from, the, from these activities, we are able to then get the profiling uh, and channel them to the right job for them. Okay, so the next is the duvet. Let's spread it out. Is it too long on the other side, so how? Let's pull a little bit, pull a little bit. All right. Straight, neat. Hakim, so how? Are we done with this? Okay, and this is it. You've made your bed. Now it's your turn to make the bed, okay? Are you ready? the first time, are you punctual every day? Why you said you yes? Is it a lie? That's lie, right? I graduated from where in 2019. Do you have a dream job? Well, to do thought engineer, like PA system because I at that at that time school I got to before. I wish I want to work there, PA system. Hello. Hello! Welcome to the basement studio. I was told that you like some video related stuff. Welcome to the rehearsal space for the basement studio. The drums also has its own microphone. Can you see? So when he hits, the sound goes into the microphone, goes into the cable, then it goes into the mixing room. Okay? So what do you see here? Gain. Gain, yes. What this gain does actually, right? You know, like right now we talk. You see at this level, right? When it goes to the speaker, we want it to be louder. So we are amplifying it but using this gain knob. So I just wanted to teach him the concept of how audio works. He told me that he wants to learn more about the mixer. So just teaching the concept of how audio uh, goes through a channel. The first thing you must do, make sure, before you switch on, it has to be... Below. Below. Why? Give me a reason why. Why do you think it has to be here first? <laughs> because if we put here, ah, then we press on. start to press, ah. the sound uh, start to go. Ah. OK, the sound suddenly might be there, right? Then it might, yes. might give feedback, right? OK, good. So we want the sound to come out first. So we be safe. We prepare, we put everything zero first. And then we switch on the mixer. OK, so you press mixer switch on. OK, now, so this master volume needs to be at zero. We try one more time, huh? OK, one line goes zero. Yes, very good. OK, for audio assistants and audio engineers, it's quite a broad job scope. Lah. So they will need to understand the concept of audio. They will need to learn how to set up pretty much everything you see. So this is actually quite an extensive job scope. Looks like you're ready, yeah? 
one marking by one marking slowly. And even the volume also. Do slowly. We're gonna start off with Abang Iskandar first. Can? Hello, hello, my friend. We meet again. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Test one two. Testing. Testing one two. Check 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 one two. Test test one two. This is awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. I've never worked with a special need person before, so I would like to make sure that I don't over, uh, you know, like I I don't want him to feel stressed out about anything and stuff. So I don't want to provide him with too much information. But just now when I was showing him everything, pretty much he captured it quite fast. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna request for my microphone not to have any echoes. Can you do that for me, please? I don't want any echo. I don't want any echo. I don't want any echo. Very good. Okay, so no echo for me. Thank you. Hello. Okay, hold on. Can I have a bit of charge for myself? My three. Can you bring down my lows a bit? Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Okay, very good. I can hear the difference already. Thank you, Shahid. High five. Oh, that was good. You learn, you learn very fast, huh? Thank you. Good morning, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and the world. Rise and shine, everyone. Back to our regular scheduled programming here on the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 6 in the a.m. And for the next three hours, myself along with my colleagues will be sharing with you all the latest news and updates from Indonesia and beyond. And time for your first sports update of the morning. We're going to begin with some updates from the world of football. We've got a talk show coming up as well and your latest viral news as well. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Welcome to City Day Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business, only on City Day Business. business. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. The ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Zihao, with Hakim, let's do this bit. Okay, so let's start by... Okay, the next thing is to remove the... What do you call this, Zihao? Hakim? It's, it's not a blank duvet, very good. Okay, let's remove it. Just make sure it doesn't touch the floor. So remember what I said about the bed being too close to the wall? So what should we do? We want to... Yes. Just make sure you bend, 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 bend. Stoop down, yeah. Very good. Okay, so Zihao, what should we do next? Donovan, what should we do next? Okay. Zihao, what about you? How do you know if this is the right side? See, the stitching. Okay, so the seam, the stitch, should be 
below. Okay? So we do certain processes whereby we actually give them certain things to do and see how they react. And from there, we can tell. And of course, when we interact with them, we see, are they able to sit down? Are they able to pay attention? Very good, Donovan. You're using the line as a guide, right? Very good. I think amongst the three, Donovan is the most high-functional one. It's easier for him to cope with the skills, so all I need to, needed to do is just to show him once and he would be able to do it on his own. Hakim is pretty okay also, a very jovial person, and he catches on to the skills quite easily. I think for Zihao, it's... I don't know, he, he needs to really focus. I think we need to block everything out around him so that it's just him and the trainer and the, the equipment. Uh, not, not too much distraction. Elisha in school. Elisha crying. Ken, you can do the duvet, yes? Duvet. Yep, it's probably easier. Zihao? Zihao? Zihao, you need to move, move over here. Yes, come, move here. We have to have a good understanding of what the disability is for each person and then have expectations tailored according to what the abilities are. So for some, it might be open employment and that may be a realistic expectation. For some, it would be perhaps just daily engagement uh, in a regular setting that keeps the person active, keeps the person engaged in society and with meaningful activities. and then squeeze it in, it's easier. Yes, so you see, a good part of it is inside already. And then the rest you just have to. Okay, so, so Donovan, Zihao and Hakim, well done. But yeah. let's see, is, is your bit very neat, you think? Maybe some Donovan, why is it not neat, can you tell me? Zihao, look at the bit, is it neat? Is it smooth on the surface? So you just have to be careful. After you've made the bed, you don't leave your handprints on the bed. So you want to make sure you even it out. Nice and fluffy. And you don't touch the surface anymore. Okay? I'm going to take a picture. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Shahid. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome. Ah, how are you feeling today? Good. Good. All right. So, you feel excited for today's session? Ah, uh, yeah, excited. All right. Okay, that's the spirit. Okay, you are in luck today because we have a jammer inside. Oh, okay, nice. so we have a real band jamming inside right now. Okay, so we're going to apply whatever we learned yesterday. Remember? Remember, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, for today, right, we're going to do some simple, basic mixing. Okay? Shai, so remember yesterday we had a session. I was uh, sharing with you how to actually bring up the faders and stuff, right? Yeah. So this is going to be the digital version of the mixer that we saw inside the room. So click on any of the yellow tab here to select the channel. So in this case, we go one by one. We select one. What we want to do, first thing first. Right now, can you see all this is in red? Yes. Meaning if you bring up the volume, would there be any sound? No. Yes, very good. Why? Because they are mute. Yes, they're muted. Okay, so what I want you to do, you're going to unmute. You're going to just bring each fader one by one and hear what sound is coming out, okay? Bring up slowly, remember, uh, and try to hear what sound is coming out. So, what do you think this is? Want, want to make a guess? 
Mm. What instrument do you think this belongs to? The bass. The bass? Okay. It is something very bassy, but it's coming from the drums. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to bring down the fader. Then after that, you bring up the next fader. We want to hear what each channel represents, can? Slowly bring up until you like the volume. Okay. Is this volume good for you? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay, bring it down. Okay, now I just want you to bring up whatever volume. Okay, and this is where you mix all the instruments. We want the whole idea is to have a balance that you can hear everything nicely. Okay, okay you try. Okay. Until you can hear, we just want to hear. Tss, 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 remember? We yeah. are. Okay. I think it's just about practice. And whether if let's say an employer, let's say were to employ a special need person, right? That he has to be very understanding about what special attention that 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 he requires. He must understand also whether if let's say to be given an opportunity to work in this field, in our line of work, right? Everything needs to be very fast. But I'm sure that there will be places where I feel he can, he can excel. I'm gonna hear the audio that you recorded earlier. Okay, is this one there yeah, today? Okay. So this is your mix. Oh. Okay. I feel good because uh, it's manageable and I can stable the audio. By big up the beta step by step, and I didn't uh, miss up. Welcome to City Day Business, your go to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on City Day Business. business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. Bringing you the latest, interesting, and inspiring news from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the world. Our three-hour news show will air early during the month of Ramadan, every day at 2.30 p.m. And be sure you to stay tuned because you don't want to miss all the Ramadan stories from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the world in our special segment, See the Ramadan Stories Only on the, the three-hour three news show on C Today. today. Berangkat aja dulu, kerjakan apa yang ada di depan kalian. Setidaknya kalian hari ini walaupun tidak mendapatkan uang, tapi di kalian mendapatkan kesempatan. Walaupun di awal-awal itu banyak sekali rintangan dan tantangan. Kalian berproses aja dulu, jalan aja dulu. Kalau udah waktunya kalian untuk dapetin uang, uang akan datang nyamperin kalian. Hal yang paling sangat utama untuk mengawali bisnis, ridho dan restu orang tua. Itu hal dan modal paling besar dalam mengawali usaha. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? 
Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi. Jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. sempit banget kalau silingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. From the Jupiters. Saya Mayor Penerbang Ferdian Habibi, leader dari Jupiter Aerobatic Team. Saya akan membawa Anda untuk terbang tidak hanya di udara, namun juga di kisah-kisah saya di teman bicara mama. a lot of role play setting where they use the real cash and they try out through role play method where they understand or how to get the change from the person or what how do i count the total amount of certain things and what all right that's how you do it okay so you look at the customer and see total Right. I strongly feel that all these role-play activities is not just for them to understand concept, but also communication skills, you know, eye con having eye contact and all. Like. That's why we have a lot of role-play activities in school. Okay. So, for example, this is what the customer orders. So, what do you say the to the customer? Uh, Total is? Total of 570. Alright. Can you say in a very soft voice, Total 570? Project, your voice, right? So, you need to say, like, Total 570, please. Can you say that? Total 570. Louder, that's right. Total 570, please. Total 570. Very good. Good try. Okay. Thank you. So that's an order. You are going to help to pack the food. And then you are going to wash the dishes afterwards as per normal. And then help Miss Vida to defrost the chicken. Okay? That's your task for today. Okay? Push the side first, then close everything. Can? All right, good job. Not rush, it's okay. What happen if you rush? I wash, wash the plate and see with. Then teacher Frida asked, help me, please. Then I clean the wash all the. A uh, knife, cutting board to be clean. Knife need to be careful. It's very dangerous. It's very sharp. And the big plate for of the class need to be careful. Need to be clean. It's dirty. 
Glass is data, drop data will crash. Dangerous. Among the job coaches, we discussed that Hakim is actually suitable to be in the cafe to work because he likes to interact with the customers and people. So it's better for him to be in that kind of setting. We are giving him a year for us to observe and to train him. And then if he's ready for that, then he will join the cafe. Figur publik kok kere. <laughs> saya setiap membeli buku, saya selalu menyertakan tulisan seperti ini untuk anak saya. Ketika lempung clay, <laughs> kau bentuk serupa batu berwujud bapakmu. Ku ingin mendekatmu menjadi pelindungmu. Sahabat alam semesta, tak semata slogan tanpa tindakan nyata. Tegas ia gurat dalam langkah-langkahnya, segala hal yang bertaut dengan upaya penyelamatan lingkungan. Dari hal kecil di rumahnya, hingga contoh-contoh nyata di keseharian hidupnya. Di tengah masyarakat yang sering abai, bahkan merusak semesta. Negeri ini begitu luas dan tak bertepi, masih banyak yang belum kujelajahi. Dan putra kecilnya memberinya kado indah yang mengabadikan cintanya pada negeri tercinta. Sebagai makhluk sosial, manusia selalu terpanggil untuk peduli dan empati pada sekelilingnya, pada manusia, pada lingkungan. Perbedaannya cuma di kadarnya. Ada yang mungkin terpanggil dan tertarik tipis-tipis saja, misalnya saja. Ketika masa kampanye, dia tidak akan melukai pohon dengan memalu poster-poster itu dan mengikatnya di pohon. Buat saya itu tipis. Tapi ada yang lebih tebal lagi, sampai-sampai saya menyebutnya sebagai pengabdi dan pencinta lingkungan. Dan tamu saya di teman bicara Maman kali ini adalah sosok yang saya sebut tadi. Kepeduliannya pada lingkungan begitu tebal, dia seorang figur publik yang pernah mengelilingi Indonesia dalam 100 hari, Nanti kita akan bahas di sini dan kemudian punya berbagai kegiatan yang betul-betul menggambarkan kepeduliannya pada lingkungan. Teman saya itu Ramon Yetungka. Terima kasih sudah hadir di TBM, Teman Bicara Maman. <laughs> Alhamdulillah ini bisa diundang Kang Maman. Alhamdulillah, yang menarik buat saya satu. Ke tempat ini naik apa? Naik KRL. Naik KRL. Iya. Banyak yang melihat... Ramon itu kemana-mana naik angkutan umum, KRL dan lain sebagainya. Di sisi lain sebagian orang mengenal sebagai figur publik. Sehingga kemudian muncul kalimat, figur publik kok kere. <laughs> Naiknya kendaraan umum aja. 
Tapi saya percaya ada sesuatu di balik itu. Kenapa memilih angkutan umum? Uh, banyak faktor sih Kang hmm. yang menyebabkan saya lebih menyukai naik kendaraan umum ya. ya. Pertama mungkin lebih ringkas gitu. Apalagi uh, kita hidup di Jakarta pasti macet gitu. Nggak cuma lagi di Jakarta aja ketika saya lagi berada di luar kota pun saya pasti juga akan memilih kendaraan umum gitu. Kalau di Jakarta sudut pandangnya kita tahu ini yang namanya polusi sudah banyak. Jadi lebih baik kita menggunakan transportasi yang memang uh, apa makro, transportasi makro gitu. Lebih efisien saya rasa dan lebih mengurangi jejak emisi karbon ya gitu. Pilihannya sih itu sih Kang. Jadi memang banyak juga yang di dalam kereta nanya, lo mas uh, kok naik kereta gitu ya, nggak naik mobil gitu ya. Saya paling ya simpelnya saya bilang, kadang kan kita susah ya untuk menerangkan ke orang gitu. Saya cuma bilang menghindari macet. Sebenarnya lebih dari itu alasannya. Mungkin pertanyaan awalnya seperti nyinyir, uh-uh. komentarnya, tapi begitu melihat berulang-ulang, ini sih ada filosofi di balik kegiatan ini. Yeah. Kan? Sehingga kata kere buat saya itu singkatan dari Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Karena naik kereta juga. Dia beliau. naik kereta juga, dia peduli juga lingkungan gitu kan. Jadi Dan tidak cuma itu mm-hmm. buat seorang uh, Ramon. Di rumah pun AC hanya dua. Itu pun dengan syarat aktifkannya di atas jam 10 malam. Jam 10 sampai jam 6 pagi. Sampai, nah, jam 5. Sampai jam, jam, jam 5. Subuh, saya alarmin gitu. Itu udah selesai di situ? Sudah selesai. Apapun kondisinya, sepanas apapun, apapun jam 10 sampai jam... Kipas angin. Kipas angin. A- atau pintu dibuka, jendela dibuka. Apa yang, berapa banyak yang terselamatkan? Dengan dengan kepedulian sesederhana ini misalnya. Itu saya bisa bilang faktor ekonomi ya dalam artian... Lebih irit gitu, efisien gitu. Kedua, kayak tadi saya bilang, saya mengurangi uh, emisi karbon gitu. Jejak karbon saya setiap hari. Bahkan kadang saya sama istri juga kadang-kadang kalau kalau nggak perlu-perlu amat pakai AC, nggak usah pakai AC gitu kan. Kadang di rumah itu AC yang aktif bahkan cuma satu. Itu pun bisa dalam seminggu bisa mungkin cuma tiga kali, artinya tiga malam saja. Mungkin di kita dingin, tapi AC itu... Hmm, apa ya meninggalkan jejak emisi karbon ke atas gitu kan membuat panas di sisi atmosfer gitu ketika satu rumah melakukan seperti itu dalam satu komplek ada 40 rumah misalkan dalam satu kawasan ada berapa rumah belum perkantorannya maka nggak heran kalau orang mengeluh bahwa kenapa di bulan uh, bulan Mei Juni curah hujan tinggi sementara belum musim hujan well climate change is real bro ibaratnya yeah. saya selalu bilang seperti itu gitu kang saya bercandanya nyebut Jenis bolong itu gaya, tapi ozon bolong itu bahaya. <laughs> itu yang orang gak sadarin bahwa kemudian berdampak juga pada kehidupan kita. Begitu pula juga kayak di rumah, saya sedang membangun instalasi penampung air hujan. Okay. Jadi menampung air hujan, nanti ada storage-nya yang bisa kita fungsikan untuk mencuci mobil, atau mungkin untuk materi bahan untuk ngepel, gitu atau menyiram tanaman, karena saya suka menyiram tanaman gitu. Artinya kita kita lebih hemat penggunaan air gitu dengan air hujan tadi. Bagi saya pecinta lingkungan bukan profesi sih sebenarnya. Ini yang sedang saya galakkan sih kan. Setuju. Itu kodrat manusia <laughs> sebenarnya. Tanggung jawab manusia itu mencintai lingkungan. Kodrat gitu. manusia sebagai makhluk sosial yang harus peduli pada lingkungan dan pada sekitarnya. Kan? Yes, betul. Bukan profesi, tapi betul. memang bagian dari diri manusia itu sendiri. Iya. Dengan saya melakukan itu ini setiap menarik. hari kayak menggunakan kendaraan umum, saya belanja di toko, memilih belanja di toko kelontong, uh, memilih buah-buahan organik yang lagi musimnya, itu part of uh, tugas saya dan tanggung jawab sebagai manusia sebenarnya, gitu kan. Kalau kita mau ngeliat kacamata uh, filosofis ya, gitu. Jadi profesi Ramon apa? Saya kalau ditanya profesinya itu apa bingung Kang. Saya lebih sebut main-main. Oke. Okay. Saya lebih suka sebut main-main. Minggu ini bisa main film, minggu depan main di gunung, minggu lalu main di laut. Ntar sore nanti main bola, ntar sore nanti main sepeda atau main kayak. Jadi saya menyebutnya saya pemain dan pelajar gitu. Dan kemudian bersama istri membentuk Earthen Project itu, Earthen Dot Project itu. Yeah. Yang sebenarnya bagian dari travel sustainable lifestylemu itu kan. Mm-hmm. Saya bersama istri saya, kami mengkreasikan Earthen atau Earthen Project, Earthen Co. Itu sebenarnya untuk, ini salah satu upaya kami untuk membantu perjuangan yang udah digelorakan oleh kawan-kawan sebelumnya untuk mengajak masyarakat untuk lebih uh, hidup yang lebih ramah lingkungan diantaranya. Yang ini 
um, kain serbaguna mm-hmm. penggantinya tisu atau paper towel gitu jadi memang setelah dipakai harus dicuci lagi ya ada juga ini all purpose all cleaner. cleaner bahan dasar dari castile soap gitu bahan yang biodegradable ramah lingkungan Contohnya ketika kami bekerja sama dengan beberapa komunitas lokal dan beberapa UMKM yaitu salah satunya multifunction scarf ya. Jadi dengan pattern um, apa? Edisi khusus. Edisi khusus dengan pattern satwa satwa yang dilindungi. Ada orang hutan, ada harimau Sumatera, ada gajah. Ini ya, ilustrator Indonesia juga. Kita ada. kita kita bekerja sama dengan seniman-seniman muda, kita bekerja sama dengan beberapa komunitas beberapa LSM yang ada di kawasan Taman Nasional Gunung Leser untuk sebagian benefitnya untuk mensupport ibu-ibu ranger ibu-ibu yang ada di Taman Nasional Gunung Leser. Kita punya ranger perempuan di... ada ibu-ibu di Gunung Leser itu mereka benar-benar orang biasa oh, masyarakat biasa masyarakat biasa gitu kan gitu jadi memang ini proyek ini waktu tahun lalu edisi khusus Taman Nasional Gunung Leser. Jadi kita memang mensupport mereka gitu dalam artian sebagian eh, pendapatan yang melalui paket yang Taman Nasional Gunung Leser untuk ranger yang ada di sana. Dan kita pun menyertakan membagikan dalam satu paket itu foto-foto mereka. Eh, kita mengapresiasi mereka juga tapi kita juga memberikan edukasi ke pembeli gitu kan. Si customer itu bisa membaca profilnya si ranger-ranger perempuan ini. Kita hanya membantu, mensupport kawan-kawan yang sudah lebih dulu menjalankan yang mungkin... tidak nampak di permukaan Kang gitu. Kita hanya menghimpun upaya semangat upaya semangat kawan-kawan seluruh Indonesia ini gitu. Maka itu saya yang kebetulan eh, kegiatannya banyak keluar pulau, saya bermain dengan komunitas. Artinya kita melihat bahwa saya bisa mensupport kamu dengan ini. Saya bisa kita bisa membuat sesuatu untuk ini gitu. Ini yang menarik, tidak ada glorifikasi untuk mengatakan diri kami hero. Kami hanya narah hubung Dengan orang-orang yang sebenarnya pejuang-pejuang yang nyata di lapangan. Itu memang gayanya Ramon Tungkai? Kurang lebih. <laughs> <laughs> Itu almarhum kakak saya. Saya dekat dengan beliau. Eh, kuih, saya dekat dengan beliau, kakak saya. Kenapa sih dia selalu mau eksis kalau aku syuting? Ijo sama yang merah ini tuh rumah pribumi, jadi aku taruh di dalam, makanya rasanya lebih welcome gitu. Modern banget. Ini tuh sempit banget kalau ceilingnya pendek. Menurut aku ya, kita belum ngerasa memiliki kalau belum ada sejarahnya. Citadel Business, your go-to source for the latest economic and business updates from Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and around the globe. Get ready for a power-packed show of insights, interviews, and analysis that will keep you ahead of the curve. Join us Monday to Friday right at your lunch hour as we dive deep into the world of business only on Citadel Citadel Business. Business. Absolutely delicious. You know, it's actually pretty good. Satu, dua, tiga. Come see the nature only on Sea Indonesia. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Only on Sea Indonesia. An increasingly assertive China and a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar are likely to be high on the agenda when Southeast Asian leaders meet in Australia for a rare summit this week. 
the ASEAN Australia Special Summit that starts in Melbourne today. ASEAN is far from being united when it comes to the South China Sea issue. Probably some countries like the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia might lend their ears, but for a number of countries in ASEAN, this is a non-issue for them. Mungkin ini sudah garis yang di atas gitu. Hingga akhirnya saya bisa bilang bahwa saya tidak mau jadi orang kaya. Saya hanya mau jadi orang yang bahagia. Apa sih yang selama ini Mbak udah lakukan buat bumi? Nanam pohon tapi di atas gunung sama teman-teman pas kuliah. Paling menghindari plastik. Bawa tas gitu, kalau nggak dimasukin ke dalam motor, udah paling gitu doang. Pakai paper bag sih. Udah pakai kayak paper bag. Tidak berhenti kepedulian terha termasuk terhadap kasus-kasus kebakaran hutan misalnya di Sumatera. Saya lebih memilih isu-isu terkait dengan kebakaran hutan ya dibanding tertimpa bencana atau apa. Tapi saya lebih memilih yang kebakaran hutan gitu. Karena bagi saya kalau bencana kita tahu bahwa siapa yang, siapa yang bisa memprediksi sebuah cuaca atau sebuah bencana gitu. Tapi kalau kebakaran hutan bagi saya itu sesuatu yang sebenarnya sejatinya dapat dicegah. Tapi Sejatinya mengapa dapat dicegah. harus terjadi gitu kan. Ada beberapa kali saya melakukan beberapa proyek yang saya turun langsung mendekat gitu. Yang bisa saya bagikan mungkin yang di tahun 2019. Ketika di Riau dan juga di Kalimantan saat itu kan di uh, Palangkaraya gitu. Saat itu uh, 2019 saya, saya kegeraman saya kan. Pemicunya adalah ketika saya membaca berita, ini before pandemi loh ya. Harga masker itu tiba-tiba menjadi mahal. Karena kualitas udara yang signifikan memburuk di sana, tiba-tiba banyak oknum yang menaikkan ini, memanfaatkan momen ini untuk menaikkan harga masker atau obat batuk gitu. Sebelum pandemi. Itu sebelum pandemi, karena dampak kebakaran hutan tadi gitu kan. E, akhirnya saya geram gitu, di rumah saya sendirian, e, saya dipojokan, saya minum kopi, saya diem, saya nggak bisa tidur. E, saya membaca banyak berita ini, saya kontak beberapa kawan-kawan komunitas yang ada di sana. Apakah betul kejadian itu gitu? Ternyata mereka mengiyakan. Memang menjadi akhirnya selain mengiyakan, akhirnya menjadi langka dan BT-nya saya adalah di Jakarta ikut-ikutan. Karena banyak beberapa mungkin beberapa organisasi atau komunitas yang mencari bahan tersebut di Jakarta, mencari masker itu di Jakarta. Ternyata di Jakarta juga ikut-ikutan naik gitu. Hingga akhirnya saya kepikiran untuk oke, okay, saya akan datang ke sana, saya akan carikan solusi. Alhamdulillah saya diberkati memiliki banyak kawan. Kenapa tidak saya mengetuk satu persatu kawan-kawan lintas lintas golongan ini gitu kan. Saya hubungi satu persatu untuk mengumpulkan donasi gitu. Tanpa tanpa memiliki sebuah yayasan gitu kan. Orang gila aja saya Kang. Saya nulis di grup WhatsApp bahwa saya akan tiba ke Riau, saya akan mengunjungi Riau dan Palangkaraya. Saya membutuhkan bantuan donasi ini untuk kawan-kawan di sana. Sumbangan terserah, bisa menyumbang masker, bisa menyumbang obat batuk, bisa menyumbang uh, berupa dana. Terserah saya bilang, karena di sana nanti akan ada yang bertanggung jawab kawan-kawan yang akan mengumpulkannya gitu. Akhirnya setelah terdata uh, kebutuhan di sana, saya mengunjungi, eh, saya tadi saya bilang saya ketuk pintu asal aja. Saya ingat betul saat itu kondisi saya lagi ada kegiatan di Belitung. Belitung dan Bangka yang juga terdampak dari Riau tadi. Saya menjumpai beberapa petinggi, beberapa pemangku jabatan di sana. Mereka juga mengeluh akan hal itu. Lalu saya bilang, Bapak hanya bisa mengeluh. Saya bilang bahwa kita bisa loh Pak membantu. Bapak di sini aja kok mengeluh. Bagaimana kabar saudara-saudara kita di sana? Saya bilang, saya sedang mengumpulkan donasi Pak untuk ke sana gitu. Lalu yang yang namanya mencari donasi itu kan pasti kan ada orang bertanya eligible atau tidak Kang gitu. Kamu dari mana? Saya bingung, saya nggak punya yayasan ya. Tapi saat itu juga saya spontan. Saya dari Ramon Tungka Foundation, Pak. <laughs> Padahal itu nggak ada, gitu ada. Ya. imajiner gitu. Saya percaya diri aja, alhamdulillah donasi terkumpul. Yang menyumbang banyak, alhamdulillah sekali semua kawan saya percaya sama saya. Saya datang ke sana, saya supply, saya mendistribusikan itu. Yang menarik di sini adalah, yang ingin, the point-nya adalah ketika saya datang, esok harinya hujan deras. Sementara itu berhari-hari tidak ada hujan. Kita semesta tahu, mendukung gerakan. Semesta itu. mendukung alhamdulillah bahwa kita tahu lahan gambut itu kan susah. Ya. Mematikan api dalam sekam itu kan. Tiba-tiba ketika hari kedua hujan deras dan berhari-hari. Akhirnya saya yang kayak 
ya Allah alhamdulillah saya jadi nganggur di sini gitu termasuk yang di Palangkaraya juga gitu ketika itu sudah beres saya menitipkan sebagian masker tersebut ke kawan-kawan yang ada di sana Mas Ramon ini sisa masker bagaimana kualitas udara mendadak eh, progresif baik saya titipkan aja kita nggak tahu apa yang terjadi dan eh, percaya atau enggak kan gitu dua bulan setelahnya datanglah pandemi ini gitu yang di mana mana tiba-tiba masker menjadi mahal dan sisa masker yang ada di sana akhirnya oleh kawan-kawan dibagikan untuk yang membutuhkan akhirnya masker tersebut yang di stok itu wah udah langsung dibagikan gitu dan di situ saya ngerasa bahwa ya mungkin Tuhan menggiring saya saat itu hadir bukan untuk kejadian karhutla tapi untuk kejadian pandemi ini gitu kan dari situ saya percaya bahwa semua terjadi karena sebuah alasan mungkin ini sudah garis yang di atas gitu hingga akhirnya saya bisa bilang bahwa saya tidak mau jadi orang kaya saya hanya mau jadi orang yang bahagia makanya cita-cita saya kan simple kan sebenarnya e, doa saya hanya sejahtera sederhana dan secukupnya sudah gitu dan itu nggak mungkin saya dapat kalau 10 tahun yang lalu mungkin saya tidak melakukan perjalanan keliling Indonesia menatap langsung wajah negeri ini gitu sejahtera sederhana dan secukupnya that's it itu aja gitu kan percuma kaya tapi hatinya gelisah gitu akhirnya kurang lebih membentuk saya seperti itu jahtera sederhana dan secukupnya apa itu juga yang pernah diajarkan oleh Yusar Mahdi uh, itu almarhum kakak saya uh, boleh dibilang iya boleh dibilang iya karena sebenarnya apa ya <laughs> saya udah lama nggak mendengar uh, nama kakak saya ya, maaf maksudnya I don't know, maksudnya gini. Saya dekat dengan beliau. Saya akui saya dekat dengan beliau, kakak saya. Saya melihat dia dengan segala kebebasannya dia gitu. Maksudnya apa ya? E, beliau meninggal 15 tahun yang lalu. Jarak saya sama kakak saya 10 tahun. Saya melihat dengan kebebasan dia, sebenarnya saya meniru, menapak tilasi. Dia keliling Indonesia menjumpai dengan banyak warga masyarakat, tapi saya melihat e, dia belum selesai. Itu yang membuat saya ingin meneruskan gitu. Hingga kira pelajaran kesederhanaan itu, pelajaran sejahtera secukupnya, ya saya cukup banyak melihat dari kakak saya gitu kan, bahwa hingga akhirnya spirit itu yang terus saya pegang gitu. Saya ngerasa bahwa yang saya lakukan bukan untuk saya. Tapi saya ngelihat bahwa yang saya lakukan ini mungkin menyelesaikan apa yang belum kakak saya lakukan gitu kan. Beliau meninggal Januari 2006. Dan untuk mengabadikan dia selain tetap menjadikan dia sebagai contoh, di 22 Mei 2008 itulah tato dibuat ya. <tato>, tato pertama. Tato pertama dan itu untuk mengabadikan. Iya, ya, saya akui tato pertama saya adalah nama kakak saya sendiri. Gitu. Dengan tujuan... Ya agar spirit ini terus terus hidup ya Kang. Karena saya melihat bahwa spirit ini spirit kebaikan kok. Wow. Tapi andai sang kakak hadir hari ini di sini.